Welcome aboard National Football Show. It's your boy, Big Sales. Hope all had a spectacular weekend as we are getting closer and closer to rent being due in September for your Philadelphia Eagles. Dude, I got to tell you, watching the NHL playoffs, NBA finals, I love what's going on right now in sports. All the OTAs, I don't know when people come out and say this. Well, we got to wait until September. Anytime you hear that from a sports dude, click the channel, okay? That's layup. You and me sitting around Monday through Friday, 3 to 6 Eastern time, each and every single day, talking about our favorite passions. I've been doing it for 27 years. I have never come on a show and went, I don't know what we're going to need to talk about. I don't know what to say. What do you want me to say? You want me to make shit up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, man, hope all had a great weekend. I want to do this today. I want to be positive. I don't want to throw any shade on anybody. I'm going to do everything in my power, not going soft, Okay. And no, the Eagles, by the way, welcome aboard people at the Nova Care Center. Thank you very much. Now the Sixers, too. My do hey, by the way, Xander, the Doc Rivers interview, I had Daryl Morey sending me a text message going, dude, that was a great interview. Great stuff. I was like, Daryl, when can you come on? He goes, how about this week? Okay. The general manager of the 76ers. Okay. Why not, Daryl? Sent him a text message. <laughs> Kevin's like this. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Sills. Hang on for a second. Can we please do a DNA check? Positive. Hello, dude. Okay. Remember something. There's always something shitty to say about something and someone. I get it. Okay, Kev. I got it. I got it. But I want to start it out here. So OTAs and charity softball events and everything that these Philadelphia Eagle guys are going through this offseason, can I make a statement to you guys? These guys really like one another. There is a fondness that's being built with these players on this team that Howie Roseman has put together. Very rarely do you see that in an NFL setting. You see that more in a college setting. But in an NFL setting like that, because of free agency and all the movement, people enjoy going to the NovaCare Center now. They enjoy going to work. They enjoy seeing their teammates. They enjoy seeing their roommates. And I mean by roommates, defensive line, wide receivers, offensive line. It's not just the O-line. There is a vibe about the Eagles right now that is contagious. Is that from Jalen? Is that from Sirianni? Is that from Howie? Or is that from everybody? It's really contagious now. There is a vibe that makes me do this. These guys are going to go to battle for one another when the shit is thin and you need your boy to go out there and get your back. There is a camaraderie that's starting to form here. This is where it needs to form. I would rather have what's going on right now with the Eagles than them sitting there going through useless OTAs and those some, sometimes useless reps and hear this. Man, Smitty's going to be a great player. Holy cow, is he great. Man, I'll tell you what. We got two number ones now. Wow. Just great to be around him. Hey, man, Jalen is really looking good. Hey, by the way, I get it. It's helmets and shorts. Let's not get crazy here. But I'd rather hear that shit than hearing this. Man, I don't know what's going on with Deshaun Watson. Man, I don't know. You know, are we going to be able to talk Aaron Rodgers out of not retiring? Is Brady past this time? That's not what you're hearing in Philly. Dak Prescott having to say that Zeke Elliott has nothing to prove this year. Hey, Dak, do you have anything to – that's not what you're hearing in Philly. You're hearing this. Man, Devontae Smith. Smitty's going to be a great player from A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown and him are now forming this relationship that you just dream. When you bring a veteran in like that, you're hoping that that happens and they forge this relationship. 
not only did the Eagles get one of the top flight wide receivers, you now are looking at potentially one of the top flight leaders in the league. There is a different vibe, it seems. It, and it seems tighter now. Didn't Hey, didn't I always think this? The old line's tight. The old line's been tight for what? Seven, eight years? There's really never been another group. Well, the D-line probably in 17. They were a close-knit group. I'm, I'm assuming that. I'm sure when you win a championship, you have to all be on the same page and you have to all look out for each other's back and such. What up, Fred? Appreciate you guys coming along here, man. Yeah, I, I, I mentioned the play calling thing. Great. Nick Sirianni has to be more of a guy who is a delegator now. He's learning how to be a head coach in the NFL. Being a head coach in the NFL is not about being a great play caller. It's about delegating, letting your coaches coach, evaluating talent. Okay, that transition is not that easy too. going from coordinator to head coach. How many times have we seen it fail? And I, and by the way, do I think that that could be playing something into this new closeness to the team? I do. A.J. Brown's leadership right now, albeit in helmets and shorts and in OTAs, is contagious. You're seeing it along with Jalen Hurts. Hey, I don't know if that translates into championships. I know it's got to start there. And that's a good sign. How about this? I'd rather have a relationship that Jalen Hurts has right now with A.J. Brown than that relationship that Deshaun Jackson and Donovan McNabb had or didn't. What was that about over the weekend? So Deshaun Jackson... Basically called out Donovan McNabb because McNabb said he didn't deserve to be a pro bowler at two different positions. I mean, who's Donovan McNabb to say something like that? That's your boy. You should be rooting for him. McNabb's a shitty teammate. It's not just T.O. now. Now it's Deshaun Jackson saying it. Donovan McNabb's downfall was the fact he wasn't a great teammate. I've heard now two players do it. Terrell Owens and Deshaun Jackson. McNabb was not a good teammate. It wasn't. Two guys that he had to rely on. And you're barking out that, I guess on a podcast, Deshaun Jackson called him out. Yeah, I became the first NFL player in history to start at two different positions. I'm assuming it was for kickoff or punt return and being a wideout. And Jackson got that honor. And McNabb said, Jesus, really? Him? He don't deserve to be there. Who would say that but a shitty teammate? Who would say that? That's a shitty teammate to say that. Even if it's true, don't say that publicly. Keep that shit to yourself. That's the stuff that got in his way. I completely believe that now. As great as McNabb was, he was his own worst enemy. That's why he didn't win at the ultimate level. And that's winning those Super Bowls and winning numerous championships, winning numerous NFC championships. Okay? Completely. Don't say that about your teammate. And I thought about those comments versus what I'm hearing with A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown and Jalen Hurts are making it work. It helps they had a relationship in the past. But look at that dynamic. And they're pulling Smitty along with them. And then you had that dude, more talented, with Terrell Owens, and you're talking shit on both your wideouts. Who would you rather have as your starting quarterback? Jalen Hurts or that? Dude, like I said, you may have those personal opinions about someone on your team. but to, and, and by the way, according to Deshaun Jackson, he, he, he went public with it and said that he even called out Donovan McNabb and he had a problem with him. So again, this is a good sign. Compared to that team, this is why this team is forming a great identity right now in the offseason. 
And I think it's important. I'm hearing great things, man. How about the way A.J. Brown is going? Man, this kid, Smitty, sky's the limit. What are, what, what, are, what are the things that he's been saying? Sky's the limit. We have two number ones. This kid's so talented. This guy just got $100 million. And all A.J. Brown is doing is throwing complete love and rose petals at the feet of Devontae Smith and creating confidence for the kid. You know, the, it's not that he needs pats on the back, but do you know what is great to hear when you're a young player? That I'm doing the right things to get to where I want to get to in my career. That's what AJ's confirming. He's not, Devontae doesn't need pats on the head. Hey, great job on that. That's not what I'm saying here. But when you get to the NFL, your path to stardom is clouded. It's totally clouded. You have no idea. I don't care what program you came from. I don't care what program you came from. Because when you get to the NFL, if you don't have leadership around you, you're not seeing how a guy got to a particular point and you don't know. How do you know what due north is? If you have to go due north, how do you know which way it is? That's what you feel like when you get into the NFL. And now you got a guy in Philadelphia going like this. This kid's doing everything right. Boy, I'll tell you something. He, he This guy's the limit for this guy. Man, that is so encouraging. Not only did you just, like, it's not drafting a diva. It's drafting a leader. The one thing that we talked about last year, boy, it'd be great to have a veteran in the locker room for the wide receiving core. Boy, I'll tell you what, not only do you have a veteran in the locker room for your wide receiving core, but you may have one of the team leaders and the best players in the league setting the example in your locker room and in your grouping at the wide receiver table. That is so outstanding. Okay. The, okay? That was so outstanding. Yeah, man. And then you got Deshaun Jackson with a problem with Donovan McNabb. Okay? So McNabb had a problem with Jackson and Terrell Owens because he wanted it to be all about him instead of winning ball games. This is where Jalen's, this is where Jalen's intangibles absolutely move ahead of McNabb's. He, he, dude, you think he's ever going to talk shit on Jalen Rager? McNabb would. Okay? It's okay if you, I, I've never heard Tom Brady talk shit on any wide receiver he's ever played with. I've never, and for that matter, I've actually never heard Aaron Rodgers say anything about a wideout. Never. I've never heard any of the, I've never heard Peyton Manning say anything about Marvin Harrison or Reggie Wayne or Dallas Clark or Marshall Falk or Edgar Inge. I never heard him. I, I heard him his rookie year say something shitty about his O-line. Never happened again. We got to block better. We got to do, after that, It never happened again because they told him to shut the hell up. You weren't great either. You had 28 picks your rookie year. I mean, you know, I saw those two stories. One dynamic with a quarterback and Donovan McNabb. And by the way, that's how I'm reading it. You guys were around it. And now you have Deshaun Jackson talking shit on McNabb T.O. couldn't stand a guy. It's not just one guy now. Hey, if you want to believe that case up in Cleveland with Deshaun Watson, I'm looking at this right here going, hey, here's the second star wide receiver, second Pro Bowl wide receiver talking shit on McNabb. You think it's, what, you think there's a lie to that? I don't think so. What's it in the best interest for Deshaun Jackson to talk shit on McNabb today? It's not what it was. He was asked the question. Guy had a problem with him making the Pro Bowl. What? And all you're hearing over the weekend is, 
AJ Smith just absolutely just going like this. Hey, man. I so love what I'm seeing. I so love what I'm hearing. You know, and of course, you know, the organization is going to go, oh, my God, Jalen's looking great. He, you know, and, okay, take that shit for a grain of salt, okay? It's helmets and shorts. I get it. But the camaraderie that they're building and the identity that they're building for the football team, you know, speak softly and then carry a gigantic stick in September, that's the kind of identity that they're trying to build right now. Everybody's right now loud because it's June. By the way, you understand, we are now a month out and a few weeks away from the start of training camp. You understand that, right? We're like, let's see, four, we're about seven weeks out from training camp. Are you ready to go? If you're not ready today, on June 6th, Eh, you know what's funny? Today's D-Day. The celebration of D-Day. Greatest beach on the planet, Omaha Beach. Today's D-Day. One of the greatest moments in civilization, in American history, storming the beaches of Normandy. 78 years ago today. Thank you. Okay? Today's D-Day. Dude, if you ain't ready right now, you'll never be ready in September. Okay, you'll never be ready in September. Okay? Rico says McNabb has a big ego and was jealous of others getting attention. <laughs> was he need a pacifier? By the way, Brian Westbrook, I voted for him today. If you go over to my Twitter page, at Dan Celio Show, I voted for Brian Westbrook, your guy, because of you guys. And because I did due diligence in looking up his career, um, he went to Villanova. I voted for him for the College Football Hall of Fame today. You could see my ballot. I posted my ballot. I get a ballot. I'm one of the 100 people who get a ballot who puts in College Football Hall of Famers. And I voted for him to make the Hall of Fame. You get Division I guys and NAA guys, and you get an opportunity to vote. And I voted Brian Westbrook, um, played at Villanova, and I voted. He was first-team All-American, and I voted for him to um, make the Hall of Fame. So Paul goes, we need the season to start already. Randall, all good, man. Westbrook was great in college at Nova. He was great. And he was spectacular. Absolutely spectacular in the NFL. Yeah, Rico, I, you know, and having talked to him and then did some homework on him, I would think this, the two most famous Villanova players have to be Howie Long and him, right? Football players, not the hoop guys. Greg, of course. Of course, he deserves it. And I enjoyed him on my program, too. So we appreciated that. But guys, don't you? Okay. Yeah, Paul, you know, the new um, the new offensive coordinator, it's just about the coach making that transition from being a head coach to, or from coordinator to head coach. You know, he's not going to do anything without Nick Sirianni's input when it comes to the game plan. But this is a good sign. It's Sirianni taking more interest in the defensive side of the ball, which he should. That was one of our criticisms last year, was the fact that he didn't have that much input in when it came to the play calling. <laughs> Eastside Monster says, hey, Westbrook would have broke your ankles, Big Sills. I'm trying to think. I played against Bo Jackson, Herschel Walker, um... Let's see, uh, Eric Dickerson, uh, Walter Payton. Yeah, I don't know, man, about breaking ankles. Those guys were pretty good, too. Okay? <laughs> okay? Yeah, you know, a Philly podcast, I heard that. 
And that's what John McMullen, who was on our show on Friday, was saying. He kind of took over after the two and five start. And so that, you know, it, it's kind of old news, right? Philly Talk podcast. It's kind of old news here a little bit. Bob, thank you, man. Big sales finally get to plug back into your show. Business travel sucks. Bob, it does. Thank you so much for coming aboard. By the way, please hit the like button, guy. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Jones, new era. Number fives need to keep it quiet. As well as DJ. Right, man, don't air that shit out. What's the point? Makes everybody look bad. The organization, the team, the two players. The, you know, I mean, come on, guys. What's the point of that? It, what, it, what it did was it throws more shade on McNabb's leadership. Okay? Going to my third G Eagle game in October against Arizona Sills. Has me ready to run through a wall. Can't wait. Dude, hey, let me just say this. Canapa, let me say this to you, brother. I think they're going to really do well. I, I loved all the signs that I'm seeing. This is a big sign for me in how they're acting right now. Okay? Togetherness. They're talking about other people on the team. Okay? I did not think A.J. Brown was – how in the world did the Titans let go of a 25-year-old star leader like that? Because you didn't want to pay him four more million dollars on market value when you're talking about top-flight guys? Man, boy, you shortchange what that guy's impact is on a team because I'm seeing it now. Dan, who would be the best quarterback in the NFL right now for the Eagles to run this offense? Josh Allen. Josh Allen. Can you imagine Josh Allen in this offense with that O-line and those wideouts? They could go undefeated. They could go undefeated. Personally, I think the problem that you see with Patrick Mahomes' offense and Andy Reid, they're not consistent enough in the run game. When they lost Kareem Hunt back in the day, after that whole fiasco, they haven't been able to replace that offense in the backfield. He caught footballs out of the backfield. He ran in between the tackles. They've never really had a significant running game since Kareem Hunt left. Kareem Hunt's now in Cleveland with Nick Chubb. Those two guys are dominant at the point of attack with that offensive line, one of the top five units in the league. Now you have a top five quarterback. We'll see when he plays. But you got some good offensive um, firepower in Cleveland. Jesse Sills, do you think Allen is better than Burrow? I do. I do. I do. I, I, I think he's more versatile. I think he can do more. Okay? If you stop the passing game in Buffalo, if you stop the passing game in Cincinnati, well, they have Mixon. Mixon's a good... That's a, it's a, and by the way, it's razor thin. I don't, I don't think there's this gigantic gap between Joe Burrow and Josh Allen. I do not. Okay. I do not. You think Russell Wilson would be better running this offense? Russell Wilson needs to have a running attack. Well, the Eagles are number one in rushing. Okay. And they did it by committee, but, but see, here's the problem why Russell Wilson would not be good in this offense. Russell Wilson's not going to get 900 yards rushing. I don't want Russell Wilson with 900 yards rushing. Okay? Oh, wait a minute. There, wait, hang, hang, hang on here. Okay? It's like Giselle or Sierra. Man, Sierra's got to be one of the best-looking women on the planet. Whew. That's what I, one of the reasons why I wanted Russell Wilson in Philly. So I get to see Sierra more, man. Man, wow. Sorry, Giselle. I'm a Sierra guy. Oof. She is. I'm one of the top looking women of all time, maybe even too, man. And she seems really cool. Yeah, Davey Boy, Wilson, 
Wilson's not going to rush for 900 yards. He's not. That's not what he does. Bengals have outstanding wide receivers. Sierra or Giselle? Yeah. Like I said, it's like two wines. It's like Merlot cake bread and Chardonnay cake bread. Pick one. I'm, I'm a Merlot guy. Okay. I think Rodgers in this offense would be unstoppable. He would Rodgers in any offense, Chris would be unstoppable. Seals, Josh Allen could get hurt running 900 yards. Yeah, well, that's why they're stopping that up there in Buffalo now. They drafted the kid Cook. They're going to try to create more of a running attack. I mean, you can't have him with 78 yards and rushing every game and 350 yards in the air and expect that guy to play 10 years for you. You also got to try to make sure that guy plays 10 years for you. You got an ability to be able to do that. Why run him into the ground? So three years of Josh Allen versus 10 years of Josh Allen if you've got good components around him. Okay? Aaron says, well, Devontae Smith have 1,400 yards. I don't know, man. I'll tell you what. A.J. Brown may see to it. Boy, do I love what I'm hearing. I can't, I can't stop raving about it. I can't. I think what the Eagles are doing right now, it reminds me of a championship attitude. These guys here are as thick as thieves here. I mean, they're doing charity events. They're talking highly about one another. They can't wait. They're not over-promising and under-delivering right now, which is great. Let people in the media and let dorks like me do it. They're, they're, they're handling themselves. I think they're handling themselves well. Okay, I do. Don't forget, Gary Cobb, Fox 29, hour 2, 430, where he always sits with us each and every single Monday. Michael, thanks for coming aboard. A.J. Brown, 1,500 yards. Devontae Smith, 1,300. Lewis, if those two numbers come to fruition on what you're saying, um, Jalen Hurts will be in the top five considerations for the Most Valuable Player Award. And the Eagles would have won 13 ballgames. Because with that running attack, you will be unstoppable. I am not a huge fan of quarterback running around carelessly. And that's what I feel, Josh Allen. Philip, did you watch that game with Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen in the playoffs? That's not exactly what that was. Seth says this, Howie is definitely building something special here. You know what, Seth? I don't know, like I said, what I'm saying right now, you know, this this is all good stuff here. And like I said, it's June 6th. But what I love about it is how they're dealing with each other, how they're around one another, and they enjoy each other's presence. That is so great to hear. That is great to hear, man. That's the kind of stuff you hope when you give a guy $100 million and you bring him into your organization. How many of you are doing this? Uh, Another Diva Whiteout coming in. This guy's going to be a headache. They always are. They always bitch about their touches. They always bitch about their targets. They always bitch about their numbers. That's not what I'm hearing out of this guy. I'll tell you what, if I'm Mike Vrabel, the head coach of the Titans, And I'm hearing what this guy's doing with my other young players on the team and my quarterback and my head coach and dealing with the new play caller. Dude, I tell you, I'd run right up to my front office and go, for $4 million a year, we let that guy walk out the room at 25 years of age. That's not a good business proposition. The number one thing you're trying to do is accumulate great talent on your team. Help your quarterback. Move the sticks. That's why Watson wanted out of Texas. He didn't want to play with the Texans. You're moving DeAndre Hopkins? You just gave me $180 million and you moved DeAndre Hopkins. How does that even make sense? I'm getting now why it makes sense because you can't keep a top flight wideout and quarterback on the same roster. You know, where do you see that today? It's going to be interesting to see what happens in Los Angeles with Cooper Cup. You're going to pay him $25 million? Well, they're not really paying Matthew Stafford top dollar right now. They got him kind of in a lower um, tax bracket when it comes to his base salary, giving him more on signing bonus. So 
Maybe that's how they're working it. They, they use a different line of credit in Los Angeles through the Rams. Jordan Davis admitted he likes cannolis. Who in their right mind wouldn't like cannolis? Are you kidding me? That's great. Oh, my God. I knew, I, I knew when I picked him for the Eagles to draft, and he's saying now he likes the Philly cannoli. That's exactly what I'm talking about here. Congratulations to you. Good morning, Big Sills. Hoping Mario Goodrich Brooks make the roster. I can't wait to see the battles in July. Pistachio cannoli is the best, Lewis. See, I like chocolate chip cannoli, man. I like a hard shell, no soft shell. Don't give me that soft shell stuff. I like a hard, crisp shell, okay? Hard, crisp shell. The balance has to be good in the middle, too, you know? Not heavy on the cream over, you know what I'm saying? And sometimes when you get a little heavy on that stuff in the middle, it de- generates the uh, the crust a little bit. Okay? Xander's like this, Sills. I need a timeout. You're talking cannolis. You could probably go for five hours. Chocolate chip cannoli? That's fascism right there, homeboy. Nobody eats a chocolate chip cannoli. Nobody. Okay? Nobody in the right mind in Philadelphia. No Italian from South Philly would eat a chocolate chip cannoli. Nobody. Nobody would eat a chocolate chip cannoli. Hey, I have a right to ban you for that. Excuse me? What is a... Co- I got to take a time out. I can't take... <laughs> hold, hold on. My head hurts here. Hold on. Hold on for a minute. Okay. He doesn't know what a cannoli is. All right. Hey, I want to hit a little bit more on this topic here with McNabb and Deshaun Jackson. Not a lot of people are hitting on it. I want to hit on this here. A little bit more on what's going on around the NFL as well. Some college football news. Please hit the like button. My friends, you know... Time of the show right now, our friends at Morgan & Morgan, one of the most important things you could possibly do, and that is finding an attorney if you are hurt or injured on the job. Listen, that is the most important thing for your family's compensation is making sure that you have the right firm behind you. They are the biggest size matters. There's not a law firm, casualty firm in the United States of America that gets you the compensation that you need. Past 30 years, over $13.5 billion dollars in compensation for their clients. Look, with over 800 attorneys strong at Morgan & Morgan, offices in Philly, New York, Florida, across the country, are going to do battle for you to make sure you and your family get that fair compensation. Call them at 800-512-1600. Look, call us free. The consultation's free. 800-512-1600. That's 800-512-1600. Open 24-7, seven days a week. And when you call Morgan & Morgan, you tell them Big Sills sent you. After a car crash, the big insurance companies you see advertising on TV, they may try to downplay your case and might say it's only a fender bender or it's just a herniated disc. I worry that some law firms fall for this BS, not us. We put ourselves in your shoes and ask, what would it be like to be in your pain for the rest of our lives? A million dollars wouldn't be enough for me. There's only one Morgan & Morgan. For the people.com. Go for the pulls and the pools. Go for the oohs and the ahs. Go for the bubbles and the bubbly. Go for the story and the stories. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. 
At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass, free. You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. News, we cherish every moment, and it's our profound responsibility to bring you closer to your world. Never miss a moment. Trust the people at Action News. All right, did you know I was the Mommy Slam Dunk champion? Really? <laughs> yes, really, don't sound so surprised. Let's see it. Oh, you're ready. All right, here we go. Let's hear the crowd. So go to right, I go to left, I fake them out. Mama, go up, up, up. She did it. Again. You can't avoid gravity, but United Healthcare can help you avoid financial surprises by helping you compare costs and doctor quality ratings. United Healthcare. Uh huh. Go for the midnight dares. Go for the game. Go for the hits. Go for the fans. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. Welcome back, National Football Show. Guys, please hit the like button. Great start to the program. Thank you so much. Don't forget, G Cobb, Fox 29 Hour, 2, 4.30 Eastern Time. Before I get to Deshaun Jackson and the Donovan McNabb story, um, here's my ballot that I posted at my Twitter page, at Dan Silio Show. Here's who I voted for. Reggie Bush, Brad Culpepper, played at Florida. Work done. Dwight Freeney, Connecticut kid. Tony Gonzalez. Ironhead Hayward. James Laronitis. Ray Lewis. Bryant McKinney. Ken Norton Jr. Tebow. I, I got to put Tebow in. And, and Peter Warwick from Florida State. Coaches, Larry Coker and Ralph Regan from Maryland. And the selections for SBS, I picked Roger Carr, Mark Cotney, John Dorsey, and Brian Westbrook. Those were my Hall of Fame nominees that I put on my ballot. So Westbrook deserves it. He deserves to be on that. Reggie Bush, it's a weird college career Reggie Bush has had, okay? It's funny now, all the money that's being given out now, Reggie took it too soon. You know what I mean? Yeah, Reggie's not in the College Football Hall of Fame. So I voted for him. So he deserves to be in the College Football Hall of Fame. Let's see here. Dunn, man, work done was such a great college and pro guy. Such a great college and pro guy. I mean, I just, I just absolutely love this year's nominees too, man. There's some really great names on this list for the, um, for the hall of fame here. Really great. And by the way, you should see all the people that are saying, asking me, you know, how come you didn't wait? I go, no, I knew my ballot was coming over the weekend. And I had told Brian Westbrook, actually, I think Reggie will get his Heisman back. I do. Hey, real quick, before I move on to that story with T.O. and with Jackson. So over the weekend, Bryce Harbor had a hell, he had a hell of a weekend with the Phillies, right? Hey, and by the way, how in the world is a team like the Angels with Shohei Otani and Mike Trout not killing everybody. 
pitching. Pitching. It doesn't really matter if you have Shohei Otani or Mike Trout, even though they're not swinging the bats well right now, you know that's going to turn around. How can you have those two guys on your team and not win? Well, like I've been telling you, the reason that the Rays and the Braves are always in contention is because they do the things that the Phillies and the Mets and other folks do, and that is they spend more money on position players than they do on their arms. There's more of a financial investment, building a bullpen, starters, closers. In my opinion, your Phillies are cheap. Well, well, they got Harper. And? Great. He hasn't done any more, probably a tad bit more than Manny Machado has in San Diego. Nolan Arenado in St. Louis. Both these guys, all these three of these guys, they're not delivering anything. It's pitching. By the way, who would you take, really? Even with Mike Trout not swinging a good bat. By the way, he's a hell of an Eagle fan. Loves the draft and what Howie Roseman's doing. Would you take Harper or Trout? Who would you take for a full 162 season, game season? Who would you take? Bryce Harper or Mike Trout? Who would you take? Wait a minute. How do you not take Mike Trout? Right? <laughs> hey, Daz goes, Daz goes, Trout, duh. I don't think so, dude. I don't think that's a, I don't think that is as dominant of an opinion as it was three years ago. Eastside Monster, see what I'm saying? He goes like, I don't know. Okay? Michael, way to sit on that fence, brother. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You take Trout all day, man. Mike Trout is a modern-day um, Ken Griffey Jr. and Mickey Mantle. Okay? I mean, he is. He's like a Willie Mays. Top two MVP voting. I mean, dude, his numbers are insane. There's another guy, too, that I love watching. That's Miguel Cabrera. Remember what they said about... Oh, my God. Can I tell you what Dave Dombrowski said about and Larry Beinfest said about um, Miguel Cabrera? Rumors in the building were that he was a fat drunk. Well, I'll take a triple crown and two-time MVP and one of the greatest right-hand hitters of all time. If that's a fat drunk, I'm a fat drunk. I'm in. Miguel Cabrera is one of the best right-hand hitters we've seen in baseball history. That's a fact. Look at his numbers. Dude, this guy's like incredible. He's won like triple crowns. He's won MVPs, batting titles, home run titles, hit titles, doubles. Freak show. Was an MVP in the World Series as a 20-year-old in Florida? That guy could ball, man. All right, let's move off that. Help me out here. Help me out here on this. So we, I don't see a lot of run going with this story with Deshaun Jackson and Donovan in Philly. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to reset it here. So Deshaun Jackson was talking on a podcast, and he said that he had a problem with Donovan McNabb because McNabb was publicly talking shit on him because Jackson – had made the Pro Bowl, and he's the first player in history of the Pro Bowl to make it at multiple positions. Deshaun Jackson, that's quite a distinction. And if that were my teammate, I'd be like, damn, dog, congratulations to you. That's fantastic, man. Man, you you, you root for your teammates to get accolades because it brings more attention to your team. But you had a quarterback who was going in the corners and whispering and talking shit on him too, like he was T.O. Do you agree that one of the things, if not the most important thing, that stopped Donovan McNabb from being a success, how about this, more successful in Philly, was his ego. 
And I'm saying that a quarterback should have ego. He should. He should have an ego. But there's got to be a line when you're talking shit on guys in a locker room or you're you're throwing displeasure out and you're whispering behind your teammates' backs in the locker room. That's the ultimate crime. Talking shit behind your guy's back that you have to rely on to move the sticks. This tells me more about him. You know, the more I talk about McNabb, the more I dislike him. The more I dislike him as a leader. I don't know him from a can of paint. I'm not talking about him as a human. I don't know him. Okay? No, no idea. I'm talking about what I'm hearing and what others are saying. You know what's funny about Brady? Have you ever heard anybody in 22 years outside of that maniac, Antonio Brown, talk shit on Tom Brady? Have any of you heard it? Any of you heard it? I've never heard anybody talk shit on Tom Brady. You know, I haven't. I've heard people say some things about Aaron Rodgers. They weren't too over the top. Jennings goes on and says some things about him not being always the best kind of guy, but never anything, you know, that would make you go, hmm. Like, I don't see Aaron Rodgers wishing bad things on anybody. This guy's like, he don't deserve that. Well, who the hell are you? So your guy didn't like other players on his team getting accolades over him? Damn, dog. Thanks says McNabb has always been that way. Jay Cutler was terrible. That's why Jay Cutler didn't win. Had all the talent in the world. Brady produced results. Yeah, but you know what? And I'll say this to you about Peyton Manning. I really don't hear anybody talking shit on Peyton or actually Eli. I mean, you, very seldom will somebody whisper anything about them other guys. I think there's a coincidence there. I'll tell you this. I have yet to hear anybody say one negative word outside of a media member say anything negative about Jalen Hurts. I have never heard a coach. By the way, we had Andy Reid on with the Sports Take guys. I had Kevin Colbert, the general manager at the time of the Steelers, and these guys are throwing accolades at him. This guy here, man, he's just got everything, and he's the kind of guy you want to have in your locker room. We really like Jalen Hurts in Pittsburgh. And you hear Andy Reid say the same thing. You got a guy who wants to be good. I'm paraphrasing it, but he got a guy who wants to work his ass off. So anytime you've got people like that, McDab didn't want to work hard enough. You know the most important thing he didn't want to work hard enough at? His relationships with his teammates. See, that's kind of what I opened the show with. Jalen Hurts is doing everything that Carson Wentz couldn't do. Do you know who galvanized that 17 Eagle team at the end of the day was Nick Foles? Because Foles is in that locker room telling everybody, I'm going to need your help so bad. And we're just going to have to pick up an extra pail of sand just to make sure we build that castle we're looking for. Everyone's got to pick up an extra bucket of sand. Let's go do it. And they did it. And it didn't matter who was in there. It was a common theme. It's kind of what's being built right now at the Novacare Center. That's why I'm so encouraged. This is more to, this has nothing to do with X's and O's here. This is the generic stuff that you're hoping. Look, it's one thing to have. It's one thing to have a great, environment in your offensive line in your offensive line room it's another thing to start to see that camaraderie that you have in that o-line all of a sudden become contagious in the locker room and here on a monday i'm telling you i'm, I'm gonna bring this up with gary cobb 4 30 eastern time in hour number two w2 goes sills getting soft no, I'm observing. 
You got to remember something, W2. I'm an observationist. Not just a sports guy. That's why when some of you go, well, Sills is waffling. No, I'm not. If a player gets better, what are you going to do? Not acknowledge it? If Howie does something right, what are you going to do? Not acknowledge it? That's not cool. People are wrong in this business. They don't like to admit it because that's ego. And so when I'm seeing something, like I said, here at W2, the reason I'm going there is because you didn't have that environment with Terrell Owens or Deshaun Jackson and Donovan McNabb. To me, in my opinion, the way those wide receivers talk, McNabb wasn't a very good team leader. You could see it here. Yeah, we'll always remember something here, W2. Just remember at the end of the day in September, rents do. <laughs> hey, it's all hey, it's all cannolis right now, according to Jordan Davis. So he's talking cannolis. I hope you don't end up looking like one. You know what I'm saying? I hope you don't end up looking like one. Don't you know we're not allowed to change your mind after new information becomes available? <laughs> Tro. Oh, wait, you sound like you're on WIP. <laughs> Not allowed to have an opinion other than the one you make 10 years ago. You've got to keep it no matter what it is. The wonder those hosts are 100 years old. Once you get a shrine and a statue, maybe <laughs> we kept the wrong quarterback. Uh, look at Monday morning quarterbacking. Maybe you did. Matt Maggie. W2, I'm starting to like to say that too. Matt Maggie. Matt Maggie. Guy goes from coach of the year to being canned. Chris goes, hey, it's kind of it, it 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 it's kind of um scary listening to Jordan Davis talk. How many cannolis? Matt Maggie. <laughs> How many cannolis do you think? Jordan Davis can wolf down. Let me see how many I can wolf down. Chocolate chip. Hey, what's the best cannoli place in Philly? What's the best cannoli place? By the way, cannoli, pizza, gabagool, um, seafood. Okay, those are my kind of my Chinese food too. Chinese food too. I like Chinese food. Got to get a good, there's got to be a great cannoli place though. And by the way, please, nobody other than Italians making them. All right. No, I don't need it. Hey man, you know, this Irish guy down over in South Phil. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, New York Mulberry street. Oh my God. They're crazy there. Oh, uh, crazy. Great. Absolutely crazy. Great here, man. Yeah, hey, so listen, once again, A.J. Brown, how about him just going like this? Look, man, this kid Smitty is going to be somebody. But we have two number ones. We have two number ones. So cool to hear. It is so great to hear that. Teammates liking one another, and it's genuine. That guy's got his money in the bank. He don't have to say that. He could be a toolbox like 90% of them are. That guy doesn't have to do that. He doesn't have to throw his arms around the kid. By the way, did I see also in that celebrity softball game they had over the weekend that I hear that A.J. Brown was talking shit to the Cowboys and Micah Parsons kind of like fueling that rivalry a little bit? That's great. Hey, and by the way, you know what he's saying to Micah Parsons? You're going to get a whole dose of both of us. Smitty's coming along with it. Man, that's so much fun when you're around guys like that. Dude, when you're around people like Jerome Brown and Michael Irvin, and those guys are your teammates, and you're winning, there, it is the funnest time of my life. Holy cow. You know, I, I posted something else on my Twitter page at Dan Celio Show. Today's the 38th anniversary of Jimmy Johnson getting uh, 
the job in Miami at the University of Miami. And I was there for three of the five years he was there. And I'll tell you something, dude. I mean, it was the funnest time of my life because you're around guys like Jerome and you're around Michael Irvin. You're playing against people like Deion Sanders and Brian Bosworth, and you're playing against all them dudes. And it's fun when you win, man. It, it Hey, and you know what? It creates a swagger. The Eagles are starting to, like, get a swagger about themselves. Yes, yeah, Sydney, They got a small swagger about themselves. Marcos, winning, winning a championship with my teammates was the best feeling. Then, Mark, you know what I'm talking about then, don't you? Doesn't it seem to me that these guys love being around one another? It's not being plugged in because of both. Do you know how many times in professional settings – you show up to OTAs. Like my friend Frank Reich this week. Last week, there were not mandatory OTs. It was in the middle of the week. This week, they're mandatory OTs, okay? And you got to show up. How about guys who just like punch their tickets, show up, then go back to where they're from instead of hanging out with one another? That's what you got with the Eagle guys. They're playing charity softball games, talking trash to other players on other teams in a good way, in a kidding way. Young and talented, man. And get this, and having fun. How much of a reflection of this is Jalen? Boy, I'm going to say this to you guys. And Xander, I don't know if this is walking back anything, but how much do you think that's worth to the Eagles right now, knowing what they came out of with Carson Wentz, to have this type of – Culture in the building. You know, he may not be as talented at the end of the day as Carson Wentz throwing the ball. But I'll tell you what. There's a, there's a, isn't there a Nick Foles kind of presence about him? Doesn't talk too much. Did Nick talk a lot? I don't remember Nick talking a lot right? Doesn't talk a lot. I thought he was great when it came to the gun violence. By the way, our hearts go out to the families in Philly too, man. Okay. Who had to go through all that over the weekend, man. Hey, maybe some, maybe something finally gets done. Okay. I don't know what that is. And this is not going to be any speech here or anything, you know, maniacs or maniacs. My opinion, guns don't kill, maniacs do. Okay, but the accessibility, something maybe we look at. Okay, especially when it comes to maniacs. Mental health has to be a problem here with this. You can't see this savagery go on in our country. This is America. Something's got to be done. I did, Big Chris. I heard that, man. Yeah. Yeah, Kevin, I mean, you know, not, 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 not to go into anything here, but... There was Jalen talking about community stuff. There was Jalen, you know, and the Eagles wrapping themselves around the community. It's a good thing. There's a really great buzz around this team right now. There's no mistake in it, man. There's really an absolutely fantastic buzz around it. By the way, <clears throat> Peter King had a really cool list. The 22 most influential folks for the 2022 NFL season. I got a list I want to hit on some of this because I do think there's going to be storylines there. Also, what do we make of the comments that are being made about the Eagles and what's going on at OTAs? And I want to re-hit on a comment that John McMullen made last Friday on our program about Jordan Davis. Gary Cobb is going to join us as well. That'll be at the bottom of the hour, too. We'll get his opinion on it all. And I guarantee you, he's going to say the same thing I am. It's now June 6th. Man, we're, we're like a month and a couple weeks out from the start of training camp here. And you can tell these guys are getting ready. And if you're not ready to go to battle in, September, in July, you'll never be ready 
in September when rents do. You'll never. So do me a favor. Please hit the like button. Hour number two. We appreciate everybody sticking with us. Keep it right here on the National Football Show. Go for the polls and the pools. Go for the oohs and the ahs. Go for the bubbles and the bubbly. Go for the story and the stories. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. On the field of life, First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass. Free. You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. News, we cherish every moment, and it's our profound responsibility to bring you closer to your world. Never miss a moment. Trust the people at Action News. All right, did you know I was the Mommy Slam Dunk champion? Really? <laughs> yes, really, don't sound so surprised. Let's see it. Oh, you're ready. All right, here we go. Let's hear the crowd. So go to right, I go to left, I fake a mom. Mama, go. Oh, mama! She did it. Again. You can't avoid gravity, but United Healthcare can help you avoid financial surprises by helping you compare costs and doctor quality ratings. United Healthcare. Uh huh. Go for the midnight dares. Go for the game. Go for the hits. Go for the fans. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. Two, Big Sills, National Football Show, Gary Cobb, Fox 29, bottom of the hour. Guys, I'm going to ask you a question about a coach, and you tell me if this statement is crazy. Oh, oh here, wait. Let me rephrase it. What amount of credit do you give Tom Brady for the dynasty in New England? 50%, 60%, 70% compared to Belichick. I'm going to make a comment here because I'm hearing something that I'm not sure I've ever heard before in the NFL's history of hiring of coaches. Um, How much do you give Brady credit for winning those six titles? Seth says 50. Crypto says 80% Brady. Brady, 51%. I'm going to throw this at you here. 65% for Brady. Let me ask you this here. Um, Steve says 80%. So there's now a rumor going around that Bill Belichick is going to hire Matt Patricia as the offensive coordinator in New England. Matt Patricia is a defensive guy. 
and he's a defensive coordinator. Um, I get that Sean McDermott in Buffalo is getting credit for the development of Josh Allen, but he had Brian Dable in the building, and now he's got Ken Dorsey. I mean, there was still an offensive-minded guy around him. I'm sure they'll be around, but you're talking about a coordinator, okay? Matt Patricia's a defensive coordinator. He's not an offensive coordinator. How would he have a sense of, you know, play calling from that side of the ball? You know, I mean, I'm just saying the Patriots draft choices. What are they, 13 and 12 over the last two years since Brady's exit? I mean, it. it, it then you go and what he did in Cleveland – he was fired in Cleveland, and I'm just – look, he taught Brady everything. He drafted Brady. I mean, he gets a lot of love. There's no question. He's going to be – but I don't know, man. These last two – what if he doesn't make the playoffs this year? You think Bob Kraft would go like this, time for him to move upstairs? Okay. No, man. There's a conversation – that they want to make Matt Patricia the offensive coordinator in New England. I mean, Andrew, you you can't deny his record. You 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 can't deny it. Okay, but I'm saying, what if he doesn't make the playoffs again? I mean, the Dolphins are better. Isn't that weird? So you would like be like hiring Jim Schwartz as an offensive coordinator. That makes no sense to me. Why would you do that? Again, Gary Cobb, bottom of the hour. Before I move on to Jordan Davis here, I want to ask you guys something else. There was a story that reared its head over the weekend. Um, And I'm going to do this gingerly. And I don't know if it's going to be something that we'll debate. I doubt it because I'm not going to go back and forth on this. But I want to show you something, the difference between Major League Baseball and the NFL, and maybe Major League Baseball, the NBA, and the NFL, because the NFL would never address this. Do you see what the uh, Tampa Bay Rays did over the weekend? Baseball wanted the Rays players to have the um, gay pride on their uniforms, okay? And the players said, It's against my religion. I don't want to do it. And they took a boatload of heat for that. Good for them. That has no place in sports. That has no place. One's religion, politics, sexuality has no place. No place. And I I admire those guys for doing that. By the way, I'm all for everybody. GT. Hey, Xander, do me a favor. Put that up because I want to make sure I read it here. GT, thank you so much for doing that. We appreciate it. Hey, did you know that Josh Allen worked out with a quarterback guru Jalen worked out with in his second year as well in the offseason? Great. Awesome. Because you don't get enough work, GT, in the offseason, or excuse me, during the season even, during training camp, that I think these quarterbacks are now going off script And I think that they're basically going out trying to get more reps and trying to get better. Jalen's trying to get better. The only way he's going to get better is putting in extra work. There's just not enough time. And there's not enough practice time for him to get better, especially when you're not going to be in a lot of the exhibition games. Okay? Sydney goes, why did they get heat? Well, you're going to be automatically called a homophobe. If you don't do it and you don't put them on your jersey, my point is there's no place for this. Why are you inflicting your political um, views on players? Players have every right. People have every right to have their own political opinions. But when you put it out there like that, you alienate people. You upset people. You upset the gay community. You upset the non-gay community. Why do it at all? Michael Jordan's right, man. Republicans... Democrats, all by my shoes. Shut up. 
be a sports league, not a political activist party. Baseball and the NBA constantly get in their own way of this. By the way, I'm all for whatever you want to be in life. I don't care. It has nothing to do with me. Why are you bringing it on these players? Your views. It, it, it really is. I mean, it's, it's just not cool. Well, here, you're aware of this. No, I won't. I mean, crypto, again, I have nothing against anybody. Nobody. Never have, no matter what they tell you. Never have. But you have a right to believe in everything you want to believe in. And making the Ray players put that on their jerseys and they said no because it's against my religion and you didn't call them a homophobe? It's exactly what you... And by the way, it's not on the players. It's on baseball for doing that. Moving the all-star game, all that stuff. A guy, act like a sport. Do you know how much I love watching the NHL? There is none of that. It's about sweaters and hard work. That Tampa Bay Lightning Ranger game was awesome. Not going to sit here and talk hockey with you, but it was heart, comeback, fight. You're down 0-2. Man, it was nothing, it was nothing but guts. Yeah, you know, Xander goes, Tampa stole it. No, they didn't. The goalie gave it up top shelf right at the end. It was just pressure. That was freaking awesome. I jumped out of my chair. I'm like, man, that's even if they had lost, I was like, that's how you compete. No politics, nothing, any of that other stuff. Just fighting. I love the NHL guys because you know why, man? Those guys love their sport. They take pride in their sweaters. They take pride in their room. That's what's happening in Philly. They're taking pride in what they're doing. I love seeing that stuff. Those are all little like tea leaves for me. And I read them. When you see teams that fight, the Lightning have won two straight championships. They're not, don't be surprised when they show up. Man, there's something about being a champion. It's contagious. You never want to let go of the rope. You hold that rope, man. Because when you let go, you don't know if you'll ever hold it again. Having that championship rope in your hand. Eagle guys felt it for a little bit. Patriot guys for a decade held that rope. Very few get a chance to get it back. Look at the Warriors. They're fighting to get it back. Ryan goes, Sills, hey. How long, how, how long until the Flyers are good? Dude, you've had a 47-year You've had a 47-year wait. Bring back sports. Our great escape. Absolutely, man. I don't want to hear any of that stuff. Avs Oilers series. That no, that's tonight. Sports are supposed to be entertainment. The get away from the day-to-day -day stuff that you see on mainstream news. Absolutely. Absolutely. To be the best, you want to beat the best. God, right. I don't want to beat stiffs. Okay. Three years minimum. We'll see. There's another organization that has problems in their minor league system. Do you know one of the things that used to make the Flyers great? Here, I'll tell you. Here, I've had conversations in the past with Bobby Clark over this. What's the one thing that the Flyers were notorious for for 20 years? Goaltending. They had goaltenders out the wazoo in that organization. Who's the last great goaltender they've had? What's the last great blue line that they've had in Philly? They don't have a blue line anymore in Philly. You don't have a blue line in goaltending. There's your problem. It's been that way forever, man. That's right. Blue line knocking people out. 
intimidating people on the blue line and you're goaltending. Okay? Beating dudes up. Dude, going into the spectrum used to be intimidating. Here were the barns back in the day that you didn't want to go in. Okay? You didn't want to go into Joe Louis Arena where the wings were. You didn't want to go in Maple Leaf Gardens. You didn't want to go in the Nassau County War Memorial Coliseum on the island. Islanders. You didn't want to go into the spectrum and you didn't want to go into the garden. And I'm talking Boston Garden. Okay, those places, you know, I mean, those were tough barns. Nashville's got a great barn. That's a tough place to go play a game now. Yeah, I knew Ed real well. I was friends with Ed. I posted an email with me and Ed going back and forth. I loved Ed Snyder. Russell Wilson asking for five years, $250 million contract extension. And you should give it to him. You should give it to him. GT boxing at the spectrum in, 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 in a city that has, that has had legendary boxers from it in Philly. Ali used to live in Philadelphia because it was one of the meccas of boxing. That Joe Lewis, or excuse me, that Joe Frazier um, place that he had with all those boxers that used to roll in there, Joe Frazier's place was legendary. Next to Angelo Dundee's down in South Florida. Chicago too, man. Yeah, no, Angelo Dundee's gym down in South Florida was legendary, and Frazier's gym in Philly was legendary. And in Detroit with Kronk, correct. Dude, that's right, Jimmy. Dude, man. Or or how about this? What's the one uh, Catholic church down there, too, that they used to have fight night at? Right after bingo. My, fo- my, my, my folks used to tell me there was a place in Philly that used to have fight night right after bingo. Crocs in Detroit was spectacular. All right, let me, let me, I want to bring a point up to you. Um... I want to bring this point up to you here that John McMullen, I want to re I want to reemphasize this. You know, John is around that. By the way, please do us a favor. Go over a, a um the website. Make sure you go to the website. John's got all kinds of great articles at jacobsports.com that he's written. Different points of view. By the way, all the videos from, dude, this week, OTAs, this is going to be a legendary week for jacobsports.com with all the OTA stuff. Okay, so please make sure you check it out. And by the way, Jacob Sports, our YouTube, obviously, you'll see all that stuff plastered all over the place. And John does such a great job, man. He brought something up to me. And I got to tell you guys, he brought this up and I never really in a million years really ever thought this thing out, but he's right. Jordan Davis is going to have an impact on the pass rush on our team. Let me show you how. So what if we did this? What if we did this? What if Jordan Davis had this type of season? 33 tackles. Six TFLs. And the Eagles were in the top 10 in yards against. And in yards per carry against. Which means they're one of the top defenses against the run in the NFL. What if his impact is in that? Maybe the sacks, obviously you're going to improve, in my opinion, from 31, you're going to improve. If you get, get get this, if you get, let's say you get to 15th in sacks, can somebody do me a favor? Tell me how many sacks the Eagles had as a team last year. Okay? 
Tell me how many sacks they had. If you're 15 in sacks and you're 10 and the least amount of yards rushing against you, and your rush defense, your top 10 rush defense, and they had 29 sacks, that's terrible. Okay? They're, hot dog, don't tell me. They had 29 sacks? The kid in Pittsburgh at 22. Holy cow. 29 sacks. So they had 29 sacks. Like I said, TJ Watt, he had 22. Wow. My God almighty. That, that's like one of the worst. I mean, the guy in Chicago, Robert Quinn, who we're going to talk about a little bit. Do you know he had 18 and a half last year? And the Bears are desperately trying to move him. 18 and a half. I know. Okay. So let's just say you get that number up to 39. So you get to 40. Right? You just add 11 sacks because of Hassan Reddick. Okay. And you get yourself in the top 15 in sacks and top 10 in yards against. Bro. Your offense was number one in rushing. You start to look like the 2017 Philadelphia Eagles again. You're stopping the run. You're running the ball. Your offense is also, get this, if you improve 20% in your passing game, which was terrible last year. Hey, by the way, what was the Eagle offense passing-wise ranked? Tell me what that was. I don't know what that number was. I mean, it, it, it's got to be down there in the low or in the high 20s. You get that number up 20%. You win 13 games. Look at what is here. And plus the schedule 22nd in passing, 25th ranked passing. You ain't doing shit with that. Do you know what that means when you're 25th in passing? You can't throw yourself out of trouble. Do you know what that means? You get down by two scores, it's over. It's over. You're not coming back. You do not have comeback capability. Okay? And you're going to most likely be doing garbage yardage. The pad stats like Dak does in Dallas. Okay? 25th offense passing last year so you had the 25th ranked passing offense and the number one rushing offense like i told you before one dimensional and you're not able to come from behind you have no comeback capability on that team with the added players or player and aj that's going to be a significant thing Dude, that's terrible numbers, passing-wise. If Jalen improves 20% and that defense improves 20%, you're talking about a top 10 defense potentially and a top 10 offense, running the ball and defending the run and an improved passing game. You'll win 13 games. You'll win 13 games. That's what's ahead of this. And you know what? Like I said in the last hour, you know what everybody's doing now? Under-promising and waiting to over-deliver in September when rent's due. It's a great thing. Okay? Look at where they're going to go from. 25th passing offense is terrible. Okay? Crypto. Seals, I know how to improve 20%. Start Minshew. Why? Because he's a better passer. They need a better passer in there for sure. And that's what everyone is counting on. Look, I think we do have to do this. Maybe I'm, I'm hey, this is going to sound crazy. But you know what? The Eagles are going to... The Eagles are going to bank on this because I'll tell you what, there'll be a lot of egg on the face if Jalen fails. 
be a lot of egg on their face. Why don't you go get Garoppolo? I don't care what you say. I'm saying because they weren't proactive at the quarterback position. Were they really just – and, well, wait a minute. They were because you know why? They made that trade with the Saints. Yo, know, wait. They were proactive at the quarterback position. Because remember what that Saints trade was for, quarterbacks next year. We all agree with that. We've, we've all talked about that. Next year's pick, the reason they – they didn't make that Saints pick for this year. They made that Saints pick for next year because of the seven dudes that are going to go into the draft. Irvin says, Hurts will kill it this year. We're all hoping, man. We're all hoping. You know, I, I, I want to start, before I bring G. Cobb in here, I want to start this out by doing, and I want to I set it up for Gary here because I'll tell you one thing that I'm really enjoying. I'm really enjoying what I'm hearing from A.J. Brown. Man, Smitty, we have another number one. Man, the sky's the limit for the guy. He has come in, and not only did we get one of the top wide receivers in the NFL, but it looks like we got one of the top leaders in the NFL. He's creating a culture here where, you know what? Look what he's doing, man. He's throwing his arm around a guy. You know these divas don't do that. But now you got a guy you're bringing in. Man, you're praying for that. I want to get G. Cobb's thoughts in on that from Fox 29 here in Philadelphia. And Gary, am I right when I'm saying, I mean, look, it's one thing, you know, these wide receivers, they like to get their targets. They like to hear this, but man, I'm, I'm getting a sense. These guys are enjoying being around one another in the off season. There's like a good, there, there's like a good like atmosphere in the building. You got AJ Brown throwing his arm around Smitty sky's the limit. Um, we have two number ones. This kid's great. Everything you hoped for that you're seeing so far, at least until September when rent's doing all that is all good here with AJ Brown. AJ's really making an impact already on this team. Do you agree? Uh, I would, I would agree wholeheartedly. You know, I was over there on Friday when they uh, opened up, you know, and the, and the guys uh, talked to the media, you know, and you could see that when they were just interacting with each other because AJ was well, he was followed by Darius Slett. And they were, you know, just just good competition, you know. They were talking about competing with each other. They want to make each other better. They're going to go after each other and that type of thing. You know, and then uh AJ talked about Darius, you know, he you know, and how uh I asked him, you know, what did Darius approach him about? What did they talk about? And he was saying they were they were talking about the techniques, they were talking about, you know, things he learn from different guys and, you know, some, talking about, you know, the different corners, you know, the strength of one corner compared to the strength of another corner, you know, talking things you want, you know, uh, professionals to talk about. And with the fact that they got a real good rapport and it's all about, you know, getting better. That's what they were talking about. You know, what can I do to get better? Where, you know, um, uh, you know, Devante is asking him, hey, what can I do? Well, how, you know, when I run, ran this route, what can I do to make it a little better? And then, of course, um, Devontae's a good route runner. So, A.J. Uh, Brown, he's learning things from uh, Devontae, you know. Th and so, th they're just trying to get better. And you could see that kind of uh, chemistry, that type of atmosphere. Hey, that's the way you win. If you got everybody thinking that way. Look, we don't have time for nonsense. We're going to compete. I'm going to try to make you better. I want to get better. That's the kind of atmosphere you want. And they do have, they have that atmosphere. You can see by, by the way everybody's talking, you know, it's serious. Uh, I went out, you know, they just let us look at a little bit of the workout. Guys competing, you know. Devontae, he, <laughs> he got deep on Darius. Six, you know. Uh, but they're going after each other. That's a good atmosphere. They really do. They, they got some good things they're working on over there, you know, and, uh, you know, we'll see because, you know, just working on is not good enough, but, you know, you got to get it done. But, you know, the thing about A.J. Brown, though, man, 
Grown man. <laughs> oh no, I I see him on them films. He looks like a tight end running around. He's that's a big fella. Hey, every time a DB is out there covering him, when he catches the ball, your job just got start because you got to get him to the ground. And and that I'm going like, that's a grown man. You don't see why I receivers put together like that, man. <laughs> hey, hey, Garrett. You know what I. What I also what I, what I'm liking what you're saying and what I'm hearing and the things that are being reported there too is that you know when you're a rookie and you you kind of broached it a little bit there when you're a rookie and I remember doing this I walked into the shitty environment of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and everybody in that place was looking for a life preserver yeah they weren't looking to help anybody next to them they weren't yeah. look Marvin Powell was in there yeah so I kind of went to Marvin Powell. Yeah. Because Marvin had played such a long time and was one of the top O line. So yeah. I kind of watched him yeah. and how he played as long as he did. Yeah. But there weren't a lot of guys in the room. Then they brought Mike Stensrud in. And I'm like, okay, here's a guy to play with Curly Colt. What I'm saying is a guy like Devontae last year, man, you don't know if you're doing the proper things on that yellow brick road to get you where you want to go. But when you're hearing a guy like A.J. Brown telling you, Hey, this kid's going to be great. And you're yeah. watching him. Yeah. These guys show you that path, don't they? That's on right. what it takes to stay in the league and to get to that next level. That's the stuff I'm talking about. Yeah, and you know what? If you're smart, you're eyeballing them, you know? You're eyeballing them, and you see them go do something after practice. Hey, hey, what are you getting ready to do? You know, if, you, if you're hungry for that. See, and Devontae's hungry for it. He knows – and see, came from that atmosphere at Alabama where they were going to be the best. They weren't talking about just being in the contest. No, they're trying to be the best. So he comes in with that kind of mindset. And that's going to be a good thing because, you know, A.J. Brown has already he's already shown he can do it on this level. So and, 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 uh, and the way they were talking and the thing about A.J. Brown is he is the type of guy. He's a team guy. You know, a lot of times, come on. A lot of times the wide receivers are not team guys, man. Oh, no. <laughs> they looking for stats. They want to get their stats. That's what they're interested in. That's all they're interested in. They're not thinking about the big picture. But A.J. Brown is not that kind of guy. He's, he's, he's a team guy, and he's a guy that's going to compete with you and he's going to work with you. And he is he's a good guy to have for the rest of those young wide receivers. Great guy because he's a worker. He's, he's got his head down. He's not, you know, got his head in the sky and stuff. So he is a good guy to have in here. And and you know what? They enjoy the work. You can see they're the kind of guys that like to work. And he's one of those kind of guys. And uh, just good to see them with their practice. I, I think they got a real good atmosphere there that's going to just – that's the way you turn out excellence, man. You just want to be getting better. And you're going after each other all the time. You're going after each other. And you know what? He said after his um, uh, after uh, uh, Jalen threw a route, he, 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 a comeback route, and really the DB was in between him and the ball, so he told him, "Look, when I'm going deep, overthrow me. Throw it out there. I'll go get it, you know. But don't don't underthrow me. Overthrow me, you know." And and they were already talking. See, they're already talking that 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 type of chemistry you want to develop with the the quarterback and the receiver. And, you know, he's the kind of guy that, look, if I don't catch it, nobody's catching it. Because then, you know, <laughs> if, if uh, somebody's going after it, and that's the way he did on that, on that play at the practice. And you can see he's, he's, he's a team guy. He, he's the kind of guy, level-headed guy, not, not out in the, in, the, uh, in the cloud somewhere. And he's going to be good for this team. He's going to be good for the, uh, a team. But he's a fighter. And he basically said, look, when he catches the ball, He's not let one guy tackle him. He said, "Ain't no way." No, he said, "No, I, no, I, I watch game film on this guy. And this guy, after the <laughs> catch, man, he is an absolute machine." I want to, I want to take you to this comment that Phil Sims made on the show on Friday. Uh huh. Um, Gary, it's it's coming out now that the Eagles are not going to play Jalen Hurts in the exhibition season. They're going to get him ready and play with these controlled scrimmages, kind of resembling what they did last year. And mm -hmm. my point to that was, yeah. I even asked Jimmy Johnson on Twitter that. Yeah. And Jimmy's like, that, that, that is a flawed 
mentality. And then I yeah. asked Phil, I asked Phil that, and Phil goes, Look, practice reps are not even if you're getting limited reps in those in those exhibition games, yeah, they're a higher quality of rep than what you're getting when you're in a controlled scrimmage. That's right. They're at the Novacare Center. So just your take on that, that they don't want to play Jalen or really a lot of the starters in the upcoming exhibition season. I, I don't like it. I, I don't like it. I mean, when you get out, you got fans in the stands. Guys come through there with their equipment on, with their name on the back there. You know, guys know, hey, this is going to be taped. And this is this is a game. If people treat it treat it differently, that's it's more intense, you know. And and you need you know that's part of football. This intensity, man. You you need that part and and the speed and like everything. A sense of urgency, right, Gary? That's right. That's right. You know, so it's it's a game. You know, you're playing. They, they're the enemy. When you play, you're practicing against your guys. They're your guys. Come on, it's not the same. And you want to get out there where you want to be able to see. You don't know what's coming. And somebody springs something on you, and you got that competitive juices flowing, man. Uh, it, it's practice is not a game. I mean, there's a reason they call them different things. Practice is practice. A game is different, even if it's an exhibition game. It's a, it's a higher intensity, you know. And um, you got those guys out. They know that the guys that are playing in the exhibition game know that. Look, either what I do out here is going to put me on the team or I'm cutting myself right now because of the way I'm playing. Everybody knows that practice. It's not on that level. You know, it's, it's not the same. So Gary, I, I think it goes into game tempo too, because yeah. you and me practicing game tempo. That's one thing that my former coach, Jimmy Johnson, we always did. It was mm -hmm. practicing game tempo. So yeah. once you got into a game, you, you, you always see the teams that get down seven or ten points because the, the speed of the game, they haven't practiced it That's right. in the exhibition season. And yep. that's always my concern when you're not taking those quality reps, right? Am, am I on the right page yeah, there? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't, you know, I know that their whole thing is keeping everybody healthy and everything. Now, you definitely, you're not going to have him running. You're not going to have him doing But he needs to see the speed of people coming around the corner. You know, who, who got ill will. You know, they're not his teammates. Come on. Everybody knows, hey, you stay away from one. You know you do not fall on one. You do not touch one. You know that. But when, when you, you're playing against an opponent, there's always a little thing. And, and as a player, you know, you, you, you got a little uncertainty when you're, you're in a regular game. You walk on the field, you're confident in everything, but you still, you got that little... Well, you know, hey, anything could happen out here because you're in a game. That's something you just – the only way you get that is playing in a game. It's the only way you get – you don't get that at practice. That's right. You don't you, – you just don't get that game tempo. No, I no. So bring... I, I, you know, I know that they have talked about how they're going to do things during the practice. The big thing they're thinking about is keeping everybody healthy and all that. You know, but at some point, man, you got to put the guys out there. I'm sorry, man. Absolutely. So Gary, you one last question there. for you here. Um, you know, John McMullen brought this up about Jordan Davis. And, you know, I hadn't thought about this. And you tell mm -hmm. me how you look at this here. Yeah. You and I both agree. This kid's got a long way to go, I think, to be a third down player in this league. I think he's got a learned technique. I think Tracy knows him from his time at Georgia. Yeah. I don't think his um, ability has lived up to his production when it comes to rushing the passer. I've mentioned yep. this before to you, 43 yep. games, nine sacks, not quite the number we're all looking at, especially for the 13th pick. But yep. John McMullen brought a great point up. Let's say this, though, Gary. Let's say all of a sudden they transform the run defense from being one of the worst run defenses in the NFL on first and second down, and uh -huh. all of a sudden they're constantly in third down and third and long. That not only improves the pass rush, it also improves coverages, and it also keeps the opposing team limited in what they're going to do third down-wise instead of having a quarterback go into a game and complete 90% of the passes, you're consistently going to be in third and long. Could that be his big impact on this team this year, is improving well, the rush defense? You know, I think some of that is the reason they brought him in there because 
when I talked to him on Friday, I asked him, I said, have they started, you know, working with you on your past Russian stuff? He, he really did. They haven't. They haven't really emphasized that to him. So I think uh, they're going to do that slowly. They want him this year. The main thing they want him to do is, is come in and do what he can do. We're taking on those double teams. And, you know, they like to play that five-man front. And I think that's what they see in him right away. They're going to use that five-man front where you keep those linebackers clean, you clog things up. That's what he's going to be doing, taking on that double team because he does do a good Jerry, job. Are those with that ends team. in a wide seven? Are they in seven techniques? Is what is 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 that what that is when you're talking five front? Yeah, that's what that's what they're in. Yeah, and they're covering got, the guards with the two tackles, right? Wait, let's say that. And they're covering the two the two guards with the two DTs. No, no, uh, yeah, the two guards. Or are they right. slanting right. on the nose? That's right. They got the, they got the the tackles are uh, uncovered. And they, they, that's right. They got the three guys inside. Got the, the the center and the two guards covered. The tackles are uncovered. Uh, those guys are outside. Speed rushing. That's what Reddick. That's what Reddick does. See, speed rushing up the field. And uh, you know that's that's what that's what really his his he loves to do. And and I think they they love to play that. I saw them, they played a lot of it last year. They're gonna sprinkle it in because, you know. You really put pressure on the line because everybody's singled up, man. You know, they don't know which guy is coming. And I even uh, was talking to, to Brandon Graham, and they had him working on pass coverage. Come on. What are they doing? They're thinking about that five-man front where those two guys outside, you don't know whether they're coming or not. And, you know, you, you could be sending everybody from the other side. You you think this guy's coming. No, he, he's running with the tight end just to try to hold him enough and then you know you got a, uh, you know somebody's with the, their helmet in your ear if you're the quarterback. <laughs> but hey, but, hey, hey, but, hey, Gary, I want to I want to leave you with a story here, and I uh -huh. was reminded of this from Crawford Kerr. Yeah. Okay. It was yeah. about Ed Jones, and I and now folks, just do you see the smile on Gary <laughs> Gary's face? So let me you just know. say this to you. Yeah. My first time was in 1987. Uh -huh. I went over to Ed's house. Next yeah. to the hospital over there. Deadman's <clears throat> over there, right? Yeah. So I walk in, and uh, Crawford goes, don't be shocked with what you see. I'm like, okay. So I walk in, and I, we're going into his bedroom, and I go like this. What are we doing in his bedroom? Yeah. He goes, okay, go to the left. Ed Jones had this giant jacuzzi in there with number 72. Yeah. There is every kind of woman you can imagine, Chinese, black, white. Yeah. There's about 40 of them. And you have to understand about Ed Jones. Ed don't say shit in public. He's the quietest guy you ever meet in your life. Yeah. But yeah. Ed goes like this. He's got like 10 girls in this jacuzzi in his bedroom. And I'm going like, what the hell is going on here? And he goes like this. Come on in. I'm like, oh, okay. I Crawford starts laughing. When I'm going like, he just reminded me, man. There's a pro's pro for you. Was Ed hey. Jones. <laughs> hey. I don't even need to comment on that, but I'll tell you what, uh, Ed is going to be, uh, Ed and um, Everson Walls, every year they come up and play at this, this tournament. So Ed's going to be coming up. He plays at a tournament. Uh, where was that? I think it's uh, down in Delaware. So every year I play with Ed and everything. But, you know, hey, there are a lot of, there are a lot of uh, you know, stories with Ed, believe me. Hey, man, those guys – God rest his soul, Mark Tune getting all drunk, man. Oh, yeah, Mark Tune. Hey, oh, man. Oh, my God. That guy was. <laughs> oh, man. Don't hey, know. Gary. Man, Mark Tune, boy. I, I, I never, I, I had my locker, I had my locker next to Ed's, and I used to walk, follow him around, man. And I was like, this dude's 37 years old. He took three years off for whatever for boxing. Yeah, you're right for the boxing thing. Man, he was such a fun and number one overall pick, right? Yeah, that's right. Number one overall pick. That's right. Dude, what a great man. You tell him I said hi when you see him. Gary, yeah, next week I, I catch I you, will. brother. I will. Hey, how we go? That's my friend, Gary Cobb, man. Absolutely. Ed Tutal Jones, one of the best people I've ever known in my life. Man, my wife loves him. We all, I mean, oh. I'll tell you what, though, man. <laughs> Ed ran Dallas, dude. Quietest man you'd ever meet with the most women you'd ever seen. It's incredible, man. Anyway, hey, our friend Morgan and Morgan, where the fee is free, which means this, they do not get paid unless you do. And if you're hurt or injured on the job, 
Finding that attorney is one of the most important things that you could possibly do for you and your family. Past 30 years, Morgan & Morgan has collected over $13.5 billion in compensation settlements for their clients. There is no firm bigger in America when it comes to doing battle for you. With over 800 attorneys in offices in Philly, New York, Florida, Morgan & Morgan is there for you. For the people, it's not a slogan. It's what they are, and it's who they are. Look, call them 800-512-1600. That's 800-512-1600. The call is free. The consultation's free. 800-512-1600. And when you call Morgan & Morgan, do me a favor. Tell them Big Sills sent you. I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. When you're hit from behind in a car crash, the insurance company may try to say, you can't possibly be hurt. It was only a few miles an hour. It's simply not true. You see, here's the thing. Getting hit at 10 miles per hour is like falling off of this. 15 miles per hour, like this. And only 25 miles per hour, this. Injured, dial pound law. There's only one Morgan & Morgan. Go for the pulse and the pools. Go for the ooze and the oz. Go for the bubbles and the bubbly. Go for the story and the stories. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass. Free. You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. News, we cherish every moment, and it's our profound responsibility to bring you closer to your world. Never miss a moment. Trust the people at Action News. All right, did you know I was the Mommy Slam Dunk champion? Really? <laughs> yes, really, don't sound so surprised. Let's see it. Oh, you're ready. All right, here we go. Let's hear the crowd. So go to right, I go to left, I fake a mom. Mama, go. Oh, mama! She did it. Again, you can't avoid gravity, but United Healthcare can help you avoid financial surprises by helping you compare costs and doctor quality ratings. United Healthcare. Uh huh. Go for the midnight dares. Go for the game. Go for the hits. Go for the fans. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. Show. We appreciate you coming aboard, and you're right. Randy White was a monster in the weight room. By the way, B234, I'm already famous. I don't need anybody else. I'm already famous, bro. We're good. <laughs> hey, top of the hour, Peter King's most compelling stories in 2022. I love Peter King. I'm trying to get him on this week. By the way, Meryl Reese is on with us tomorrow. So we'll talk to the voice of the Philadelphia Eagles tomorrow. We'll get his spin. Um, Deshaun Watson, man. Now there's a 24th chick. 
<laughs> hey, it, you know, I'm 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 not laughing at the women who are filing these these cases against the guy, but I mean, Hoss, you spent a lot of your time on Instagram. I mean, I don't know who spent more time on Instagram, you or Ben Simmons. I mean, seriously, this, I mean, 24 chicks now are saying that you acted inappropriately on massages. Now, I'm not the judge or the jury here in this, but I am the judge and the jury with you guys when it comes to the court of public opinion. And this ain't a good look. Okay? <laughs> this is, I mean, how, do you think there'll be 50? So this guy's got, I don't know about you, but I don't like a lot of people touching me. Wouldn't you have picked like the hottest chick on the planet and had her as your massage therapist if it was just one person working on you? I don't know if I want 30 different people touching me like that. I mean, it's creepy. This is coming off creepy a little. Okay. I mean, it's really creepy. I don't know what's right or wrong here, but dude, right? I mean, it, 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 hey, he's not going to have any um, jail time facing him. But I don't know if you ever recover from this. You think he ever recovers from this? Oh my God, yeah, this is a PR disaster. He ain't recovering from this. You're going to look at him as a creepy dude at best. Right? Dude, I'm with Xander's right, man. Or tone, right? Something smells in Cleveland. Hey, tone. Just, I mean, look, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll say this on what I said to. Another sportscaster. Look, it's not 24 women lying. These 24 chicks are represented by one attorney. Could the one attorney be lying to get settlements for his clients? Absolutely. And I'm not saying Tony Busby is. I'm just saying it's not 24 women, you know, making comments. It's one attorney representing those women. And I'm not taking a side on anything here. All I'm saying is, is that it's creepy. Dude, at best, the league's going to look at you and go, you know. All right, Xander just dropped this in. Okay. Now, that's impressive. That's impressive. Aaron Donald just got two years, $60 million. Two years, $60 million. They're paying him quarterback money for the next two years. Where in the world are the Rams getting this money? Wow. Two years, 30 million. And you know what? He's still, if I'm not mistaken, he still has... Two to three years remaining on the deal he currently has now. Okay, so I'm assuming that this is going to be added. He's played eight years now, right? Hey, hey, Jeremiah. Jeremiah goes like this. Hey, Sills, Aaron Donald's not retiring. $30 million a year? <laughs> yeah. Just signed with Kanye's people? Yeah, yeah, you think? COVID money. If you're going to polarize and not expecting it. Hey, hey, I don't know, Dank. I don't know about that stuff, man. Okay. I don't know. I, I don't know. No, dr dr I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, how much is it guaranteed? I think, Xander, I don't know if the details of the deal has been put out there yet, but he just signed with Kanye, too. So Kanye gets... A piece of that too. 
Kanye just boy, Kanye, you know Kanye West is worth two billion dollars. You know that's what his net worth is. So when people look at Kanye and think he's a dumbass, you would be um you would be you would be shortchanging that guy. Kanye West is worth two billion dollars, and it ain't all off his music. He's got a cologne. He's got uh, clothing. He does all that stuff. Makes purses and women's shoes. Kanye West is a brilliant dude, man. Okay, he's a brilliant guy. The guy's worth two billion dollars. Yeah, hey, man, d- 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 Chris, how do the Rams do this? Chris, you know what? Again, it really shows you a little bit of a difference in how you build a team. That's a great. That's a great topic. Do you do you like the do you like the way Howie's building his team, or do you like the way Les Snead has built the team in Los Angeles? Okay. Sills, Jim Tomei canceled his Brown season tickets. Wow. Thirty million guaranteed. LeBron hit one billion. I, I heard that. Man, the, the Rams, it's a great, it's a great question. The Rams don't believe in first round draft choices. They don't believe in them. They believe in going out and making trades using their draft capital. And they won championships doing it. They got a quarterback. They got Cooper. Cup. Well, I can't remember the next time the Rams have a first round draft choice. I, I, I don't know when the Rams have a, have a first pick. Traylon Burks. Hey, how about that guy? Did you hear what's going on in Tennessee right now? He can't get through OTAs in helmets and shorts without being winded. He, he's like being, he's like getting sick in OTAs. OTAs are like nothing. You're just running around at full speed, having a fun time. And this guy's gasping for air and they're taking him in for for like IVs because it's too hot. He's from Arkansas. And they got rid of A.J. Brown for that dude. By the way, I remember something. I kept going like this to you. I don't know. I saw him at the combines. I was like, I don't know. He looks like a big presence of a kid, but I don't know. Had people telling me, didn't impress people at the combines. Asthma. Yeah, Jimmy will tell you about the asthma field. Tell you about the asthma field. Man. Smile says, LeBron Eighth black billionaire in the United States. Six of eight are entertainers. Smile, great. We need more billionaire owners to be minorities. Absolutely. It would help. It would help the sport more. And again, I don't really care who owns my team, but it'd be a good look for the league. LeBron was blessed by a rabbi. I don't care what he was blessed by, man. I could care less. Yeah. You were never impressed by him. Average of who? Aaron Donald? Dude, $60 million. You know what, though, man? The Rams build it. I like the way the Rams. Uh, Eastside Monster, I did it first as one of my top wideouts. I had him ranked fifth, actually. Okay? And then I started thinking about him, and I was like this. I'll take the kid from um, Ohio State, not the Olave kid, the other one. And remember, I didn't. I don't really like the kid from Southern Cal. I need to find that rabbi. Okay, yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah. All right, listen, Peter King. The most intriguing stories, but I want to hit more on that. Would you would you rather build your team the way the Rams are or the way Howie is? 
that means you have to get a veteran quarterback and have a veteran QB instead of going into the draft next year with those two first rounders. What's the best way to a title? What's the fastest way to a title? The Rams. The, the, the Rams have some of the best players in the NFL on their roster, and they just won the Super Bowl. Hit the like button. Hour number three. Keep it right here on the National Football Show. When choosing a lawyer for your injury case, you may ask, does the size of the law firm matter? Well, of course it does. The insurance company, they're huge with unlimited resources. And whether your case is big or small, they're built to bully you out of the money you're owed. But here's the good news. We're big too, the biggest actually. And we're built to fight to make them pay for all that was taken from you. Size is our strength. There's only one Morgan & Morgan, forthepeople.com. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. Do you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Android TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. The big story on that can you search 6ABC Philadelphia and start streaming today. In Philadelphia, we celebrated the miracle with pride only five years ago. And then the following morning, IBEW Local 98 members went back to work, building this city, rescuing our communities from decay, and inspiring the young men and women of the region to take pride in who we are. Like the cats, Local 98 members believe in hope. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and career opportunities with Local 98, visit us, ibew98.org. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass, free. What's that? Uh, a rocks glass? You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. Holy shit. And you're telling me I can get one of these glasses for free? That's right. One free rocks glass per customer with each first-time purchase of Stateside Vodka. So good, it just disappears. National Football Show. We appreciate everybody jumping aboard with us. Thank you so much for stepping in with us here. Bunch of stuff still yet to hit on. I listen. I I, I want to go, and I'm going to reset what we hit on in the first hour here a little bit. Also, Aaron Donald gets two years, sixty million dollars added on. I would assume to his current contract that he has three years remaining on. So that'll probably be either at the beginning of this year. Do they start it now, or is that going to be at the tail end? and now turn this deal into a five-year contract to keep him in Los Angeles Rams gear for the next five years. So we'll hit back on that here. CBS Sports, you know, and I tell you guys this all the time, I I love lists, and I love how people look at certain decades and eras of football. And CBSSports.com had the quarterbacks of the decades, and I kind of disagree. Look, 50s. I'm not going to go there. They said Otto Graham. I don't really care about any of that, you know, okay? $95 million through 2024 is the total package. Man, that's great stuff. That's great stuff, okay? Hertz will get 4,000 yards this year with 33 touchdowns. You've only had one quarterback in your team's history throw for 4,000 yards. 
he better get there. There's an additional game. I mean, 4,000 yards, that, that's where you have to be. 3,200 yards and 16 touchdowns ain't going to cut it. Okay? Spa, appreciate you coming aboard. CBSSports.com, really, I, I like this list kind of. 60s, they had Unitas. I would have went. So 60s, you take Unitas. I would have took Star, man. Five titles in nine years. You take Unitas. Okay, who was the better? It's kind of like, I guess if you were going to make it modern, you, you'd, you'd look at it and go, Unitas was more like a Peyton Manning and a Dan Marino, and Star was like Aikman. You know what I mean? He was kind of like that, you know? Not going to put up giant numbers, but they won. So I don't know. However you look at it, um, I, I would have took Star because he won more. 70s Bradshaw, four titles in six years. I don't know how you don't go with anybody else other than that. The 80s, it was Montana. Completely agree. The 90s, Brett Favre. Really, the 90s? You think Brett Favre over Aikman? There's that battle again. Who was the better quarterback, Aikman or Favre? Uh, who's the better quarterback, Aikman or Favre? Uh, Favre was entertaining as hell to watch. He, he was just great to watch. Yeah, but Yale, Favre didn't win like Aikman did. He didn't win like Aikman did. Brett Favre, 90s? Man, probably so, I guess. Aikman used to... Uh, I, I, hey, Yale, I think that was more Emmett. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, Chris, Aikman had three rings. Favre had one and two NFC championships. Let's see. 2000s, they had Peyton Manning. I suppose. 2010s and 2020s, they had Brady. But Peyton Manning in 2000s, really? I guess. I guess so, you know? I guess. Peyton Manning. See, Peyton Manning and Tom Brady... Reminded me of Phil Mickelson in Tiger Woods. Phil was great, but he was in the Tiger era. You know what I mean? He was in the Tiger era. He was never going to be better than Tiger. And he's a tremendous player in his own right. Wasn't Russell Maryland on those Aikman, Jimmy Johnson teams? He was. He, he was. How many primetime games... We have this year quite a quite a few GT. You'd rather have Favre, Big Ben too, right, man? Big Ben's won a lot. Sounds like you're saying Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning, Peyton Manning. Brady was breaking Peyton's passing records. Brady was winning. What up, Carlos? Hey guys. Carlos reminds me, please hit the like button. Thank you so much for coming aboard. We really appreciate it. You know, I started the show out here today by doing this. You guys are doing something really great here. By the way, Peter King, his top 22 most influential people and storylines this year going into the 2022 NFL season. I want to hit on some of these because I do think they're going to be significant. So we're going to hit on that. But I, I, I want to reset this because I want to make sure that this lands right for you guys. You know, I started in the first hour and I was talking about what's going on now with the Eagles and how they're building this really cool culture where you're seeing camaraderie being built on both sides of the football. By the way, this has got a lot to do with the coaching staff too. This has got a lot to do with the front office putting people in a position to be able to do this. You know, the passing of, and last year we saw a little bit of this when people were asking me, you know, what impact is it going to be for Nick Sirianni not to be the play caller this year? Well, they were doing that after they were two and five anyway. They, he had kind of 
relinquished it. But now this transition that Nick Sirianni is making, let me give you guys a little bit of a benchmark here and some of the conversations that I've had with other coaches that have made this. And I'll talk to you most notably about Bill Parcells. And I'll also talk to you. See, this is why Jimmy Johnson never struggled with this aspect of going Andy Reid too. Okay, guys, will you do me a favor and tell me what Andy Reid's record was his first year in Philly? What was Andy Reid's record in Philadelphia um, his first year? And I'm going to give you comments that I've talked to coaches over and had conversations with them. When you are a coordinator and you have been a coordinator your entire coaching career, Nick Sirianni, and when you're one of these coaches, they were 5-11, and 4-12. and 12. They were like 4-12, and 12, okay? Is that what Andy's record was? All right, 5-11, and 11, whatever it is, okay? Bill Parcells, too. Parcells, what was the famous comment he told everybody in Sims? We get through our first year, Sims. I think they were 6-10. and 10. We're going to win a lot of games here. Going from that headset where you only hear your group, your wide receivers talking, and you're plugged into the offensive coordinator, now you've got to put a different headset on. Now you've got offense here, defense here. The coaches really actually have a clicker, and the head coach can hear, and he can go back and forth and listen to what the defense and offense is coaching. And that's what Jimmy used to do. Jimmy used to just listen. Barely gave his opinion unless it was two minutes going into the half or it was two minutes left in a ball game for timeouts. Jimmy controlled the timeouts. Okay? I'm not talking his last year. I'm talking his first year. What was his first year in Philly? It's all simple. 5-11? and 11? Okay. Bill Parcell said his biggest transition was going from being a coordinator and going from a position coach to being a head coach. You, if, if that transition from going from the college game to the NFL game is a leap, can you imagine where you're coaching five guys or seven guys and you're sitting in a room with seven guys versus sitting in the room, if you're going into training camp with 90 guys and now to 53 guys, can you imagine you have to be in control of everything, game plan, Offense, defense, special teams meetings. You got to be in special teams meetings. Maybe you were only in special teams meetings half the week. Now you got to be there every day. When you're installing your game plan on defense, I would assume a good head coach wants to be in that room to listen what the fundamentals are going to be. Say you're playing against the Cowboys. What are you going to do that week against Dak? Running back's not really healthy. Are we going to attack more on a blitz? Or do, you're going to be, you want to know what's going on. That transition is not as easy. Look at Sean McVay. See, I thought Sean McVay did it perfectly. Sean McVay hired Wade Phillips, stayed out of the way until he learned. Now he's more involved on the defense. By the way, here's a great example of that. Sean McVay had to be cool with the fact that Aaron Donald just got $60 million added to his deal. He's also in that conversation with Les Snead and Kevin Demoff in Los Angeles with the Rams. When you're a position coach, you think you're talking salaries for a DB if you're the wide receiver coach? You're not dealing with that shit. That's nothing to do with you. But now, because you're the head coach, that's got everything to do with you. And... Do you know the most important thing now Nick Sirianni has to do? Watch this, guys. Nick Sirianni has to go like this. Man, do we keep more D linemen this year? Do we keep more old linemen? Do we keep more wide receivers or DBs? Because it's a numbers game. Sometimes you've got to keep one more guy because you're hurting your old line, so you'll keep an extra guy for a couple weeks. Put a guy on your practice squad. You got to do all that shit, and you're dealing with Howie in this, and you're getting the team prepared. Nick Sirianni can't be calling plays. 
You don't want your coach calling plays. You want your coach designating a guy who trusts, he trusts to call plays so you can do all this other stuff you have to do. I say this to people all the time, man. Make no mistake about it. I mean, when you're talking about being a head football coach in today's NFL, brother, there, there are so many other issues that you have to deal with. And play calling is the least. What's the sense of having a good play caller if the rest of your team sucks? What's the point? Well, he's a really good play caller. Yeah, but the defense sucks. <laughs> well, what shit? What kind of coach are you then? That's the biggest mistake coaches fall in. That's why hiring the right guys, having the right coaching staff, having a front office that's in your pocket. You know? So this year's going to be big, in my opinion. And I and I I think it's a great thing that Nick Sirianni is moving into that position and moving into that realm when it comes to being a head coach. It shows you growth. All right. Hit hit the like button here. Um, I'm gonna get to these top 22 storylines this year in the NFL. But real quick, we kind of broached this at the top of the hour a little bit. They just gave Aaron Donald a two-year contract extension. The Rams built for today. Howie doesn't want to. Howie would never trade those draft choices away for a veteran quarterback. So let me ask you this. Let's ask two questions. Can Jalen Hurts win a Super Bowl? Can Jalen Hurts win a Super Bowl? Now, this is if you're going to build it like the Rams. Because they had to ask that question about Jared Goff. Can he get us back to a Super Bowl? Okay. Can Jalen win a Super Bowl? Should we trade for a veteran quarterback? Or should we draft one? That's how the Rams look. I'm acting like the Rams now. Not the Eagles. Smile says never. Sills, if Hurts starts off slow, do you put Minshew in? Jesus, criminy. That would be a disaster season. No, and I'm sorry. It's a contract redo. Added $40 million to it. Yeah, Jalen can win a Super Bowl. Why would he trade for a vet? Because I'm acting like the Rams here, maniac. Okay? Jared Goff went to a Super Bowl, won an NFC title, and they traded him. I'm acting like the Rams, and I'm going to ask you if this is a way that's better than what Howie's doing. That's all I'm asking. The Rams have all this money, it seems. No draft choices. They don't draft anybody in the first round. They don't believe in it. They trade all these picks away, and here they are, one of the perennial favorites to go back and win another Super Bowl. Are the Rams wrong? I love how we approach it so far, and Jalen Hurts can be part of a Super Bowl team with the defense carrying him. Hurts wins, we win. Eagles' approach is different from the Rams. I like what Philly does. You don't like what the Rams are doing? You don't like what the Rams are doing. I do. Don't you want to win today? The Eagle philosophy is kind of wishful thinking. Well, he's going to improve. We're hoping this happens. We're hoping he plays. They made a move for Matthew Stafford, brought his ass in, and it worked. Sean McVay, Les Snead, and Kevin Demoff were right. They weren't wrong. Howie Roseman has not got the quarterback position right since he's been the general manager of the football team. He kind of got it right with Donovan. Being in the room with Joe Banner and them dudes. But they haven't had a quarterback that they were right on since McNabb. So let's not kid ourselves. 
The Eagles have not been right at the quarterback position since McNabb's prime. Just have it. Traded the guy away, and now we're still sitting here throwing tarot cards at the wall, hoping that Jalen turns into a pro bowler and turning into a top flight quarterback. We're still, we're still hoping for that. Whereas the Rams do it this way. And again, I'm playing along with the Rams side of the table here. Eric says Hertz is exciting to watch. I don't care about Michael Vick stuff. You don't think Joe Burrow's entertaining to watch? I'd rather watch Joe Burrow than Hertz any day. Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson. Okay, Patrick Mahomes. Sorry, dude. That kid's not in those guys' leagues. Bro isn't going anywhere, except that he just won the AFC. Okay. Hertz became a number one fantasy quarterback. Okay. Eagles going to surprise us this year. I got him winning the NFC. Who would trade? Who would the Eagles trade for with two first? Colby's right. I'm acting like the Rams here. Guys, I'm not saying I would do this. Let's talk this through here. Are the Rams doing it wrong in how they're building their team? It's a question. Do you like the way the Rams are doing it? are doing it, or do you like the way the Eagles are doing it? Let's take a look at this here. Under Sean McVay. Let's take a look for a second here. Since McVay's been in the building, Sean McVay, coaching record, He's 62 and 29, the way we're talking here. He's 62 and 29, and he's 36 years old. You got old linemen on your football team that are older than the head coach of the Rams. Here's McVeigh. First year. 11 and 5. Wins the NFC West. Lost to the Atlanta Falcons in the wild card. Second year, 13 and 3. Wins the West. Lose to the Patriots in the Super Bowl. So in his first two years, this way, they're 24 and 8. They missed the playoffs in 19 and go 9 and 7. 2020, they're second in the West and they're 10 and 6. And they lose to the Packers in the divisional round. They did win a playoff game that year. This last year, 2021, they're 12 and 5. They win the Super Bowl and are Super Bowl champions. So when the last one, two, Three, four years. The Rams have won two NFC championships in the Super Bowl and are seven and two in the playoffs their way. And you like the way the Eagles are building the team through the draft versus that way. That's a winning record. You tell me. So you trade Jalen away with a couple first round picks and you go get Derek Carr next year. Or let's see who else. Kyler Murray. Maybe Lamar Jackson. Um... Lamar Jackson is still negotiating his contract. He's still negotiating that deal. Okay? You get a veteran quarterback in the building. 
like the Rams are, and you build the football team veteran quarterback-wise, and you win today. Today. Not tomorrow. Today. Let's go on a draft next year and develop a quarterback again and go back to square one. And sit around here putting around Philadelphia whether or not Jalen's going to win a Super Bowl. And again, I'm talking about how the Rams do it versus how the Eagles do it. The Eagles, and hey, I started the program off here today saying, I really love what's going on. However, the contract extension today is showing you the money that they're throwing at Aaron Donald, the money they're going to throw at Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup steals are going to come up here. Yeah, because he's the better version, Tito. Wait a minute. You'd rather have Jalen Hurts than Lamar Jackson, who led the NFL in passing touchdowns? Jalen Hurts in his entire career will never lead the NFL in passing touchdowns, ever. I mean, yeah, look at the contrast. You're right. The way they're building it now, the Eagles is a slower build. The Rams are building today. Last four years, they've won two conference titles and a Super Bowl. And I can't remember the last time they had a first-round pick. They traded all of them away for Jalen Ramsey to the Jags. Then they've traded him for Stafford. Hurts is exciting. What game was exciting to you last year, Eric? What game? What game were you, like, excited? Dave goes, Dan, when does the hurt stuff end with you? I don't know what you're talking about, guy. Okay? I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm talking about two contrasting views on how you build the team. The Rams... And the Eagles. And somehow, you have put it in where it's bashing on Jalen. They moved off of Jared Goff, the Rams. And the Rams won an NFC championship with him. And had a winning record with him as quarterback under Sean McVay. This is just a conversation on how teams are being built versus the way the Eagles are building. What in the world are you talking about? follow along, you know? Don't be like some of those idiots that call those radio shows in Philly and only talk about 2% of what they want to hear. Stupid. Eagles swing both ways. Can you do both ways? Cooper Cup was a draft choice. Actually, wasn't even a first rounder. Two thousand, really? East side? It's been that long. Hey, Randall, easy guy. I'll control the content. Appreciate it, kid. Wow, the Rams East side haven't had a first round pick since two thousand sixteen. That's crazy. That is crazy. Michael says trade for Josh Allen. How much? Hey, hey, Michael. You would have to trade five first round picks. Okay? Five first round picks to get Josh Allen. And I don't even think that's enough. Let's see what happens next season. Yeah. Again, the only thing I'm having a conversation about is how the Rams build the team versus how the Eagles are building it. Great point, Jimmy. Dan, will the Rams be able to sustain a team with that talent? That's the that's the million. Yeah, but watch this. Let me ask you this. Let me go here with you, Jimmy. Would you take two years of mediocre football if you were to win a Super Bowl every third year? Because of the way you're building your team? 
when you take some sorry ass football, as long as you knew that you were going to trend back in the right direction, it's kind of what the Rams did after they lost that Super Bowl to the Patriots. They trended down and then back up again, right? They missed the playoffs. Then they trended back up again and won the Super Bowl. Dude, Colby, <laughs> the salary cap, the salary cap for the Rams, okay? Okay, the salary cap, I'm with you, man. And Randall says Rams could have issues in two years. When the players get old, Randall, and they can't replenish, then you fall down the pit that the Eagles fell down when they were 4-11-1. It's true. How he did well in the cap. How about this? How how has the team been run since the Super Bowl? Okay? Dude, they do, Daz. I've never seen anything like it. They sign everybody. And they give a mountain of money away. Stan Kroenke, man. I mean, he just gives a ton of cash away. L.A. is a small market. Philly wouldn't let the Eagles trade that many first-round picks away. Los Angeles is the second biggest city in America. They're the second biggest city in America, dude. <laughs> I don't know what that – yeah, and, and Dank goes, Ed, you go into the draft next year. I'm just saying what the Rams are doing is pretty remarkable. All right. Peter King, top 22 storylines for this upcoming NFL season. I want to hit on that. Please do me a favor, guys. Hit the like button here. Don't forget Morgan & Morgan where the fee is free. Look, finding that attorney if you're hurt or injured on a job is one of the most important things you and your family can do. And Morgan & Morgan, who I've known for over 25 years, are the people for you to do it. For the people, it is not a slogan. This is who they are. Past 30 years, they have gone out and done this. They've collected over $13.5 billion in settlements for their clients. They're the biggest firm in the country with casualty injuries. Okay? This is what Morgan & Morgan is, the biggest law firm in America. Over 800 strong attorneys and offices in Philly, New York, Florida, all across the country. Make no mistake about it. Morgan & Morgan is there for you. The call is free. Okay? 800-512-1600. The consultation's free. 800-512-1600, open 24-7, seven, seven days a week. Making sure that you understand no case is too small. There's no such thing as a fender bender when you're talking Morgan & Morgan. And when you call them, do me a favor, tell them Big Sales sent you. Many times when people are injured at a place of business, they don't realize they may have a case. The fact is injuries should not happen. And most of the time when someone is injured, someone is at fault. Maybe the store manager installed a cheap, slippery floor, or there wasn't proper security. After an injury at a hotel, restaurant, store, or any place of business, it's so important to call us. Time matters, size matters. Morgan & Morgan, for the people. .com. Go for the pulls and the pools. Go for the oohs and the ahs. Go for the bubbles and the bubbly. Go for the story and the stories. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. On the field of life, First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass. Free. You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that.
action news, we cherish every moment. And it's our profound responsibility to bring you closer to your world. Never miss a moment. Trust the people at Action News. All right, did you know I was the Mommy Slam Dunk champion? Really? <laughs> yes, really, don't sound so surprised. Let's see it. Oh, you're ready, all right, here we go. Let's hear the crowd. So go to right, go to left, fake a mom. Mama, go, oh, mama! She did it. Again? You can't avoid gravity, but United Healthcare can help you avoid financial surprises by helping you compare costs and doctor quality ratings. United Healthcare. Uh huh. Go for the midnight dares. Go for the game. Go for the hits. Go for the fans. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. Welcome back. Big Sills, please hit the like button. Thank you guys so much for coming aboard. You know, one thing, you know why the Phillies don't want to act like the Rays? Because they don't want to have anybody look at them and say, you're not entertaining. The Phillies are more entertaining than they are winners because of Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper, he, he clouds the most important thing. And that's why you won't win with the Phillies in your current state. He's entertaining to watch. Hit his 13th home run over the weekend. So what? Rays are boring. The Royals, when they won the World Series, were boring. The Brewers are somewhat boring. But they're all 10 times better than what the Phillies are. And people in Philadelphia keep, well, you know, we got four months of baseball. It won't matter. It won't matter. But, hey, you got Bryce Harper. Look at what Artie Marino has with the Angels, with Shohei Otani and Mike Trout. How could you have those two dudes on your team and you blow? How can you have those guys on your team and be sorry? Because you know why? It's about turnstiles. The Philly organization is never going to look like the Rays. Nobody is. Rays got a $63 million payroll, and they take out the Yankees and Red Sox every year. You know what the Braves do to you, too? They make, the Braves make the Phillies and the Mets look like chumps every year. They get rid of their best player, send them to Los Angeles, and they're still the Braves. Why? They invest in pitching. They invest in pitching. When's the last time the Phillies had an arm? Arietta? When's the last time they had a decent arm? <laughs> when's the last time they had a really good big time ace? Bullpen guy. Jesus criminy. It's nauseating to listen to people sit around and talk Phillies baseball for seven hours and go, you know what the problem is. This is the same thing with the Sixers. It's organizationally upside down. They don't, they believe in too much of the analytics and they don't look with their eyeball test. You know, I'll give Howie Roseman credit for this. Do you know what Howie does? Howie's at least got an eyeball test. That guy's good. And he's smart. He goes, let me draft out of the SEC, and he's good. Hello. That's not rocket science. That's not analytically breaking down a guy's position. Well, he played at Georgia. He won a national title, and he ran a 4.78 at 341 pounds. I don't know. I, really? Do I need any more than that? So wait a minute. Jordan Davis won a national title. He's 6'6", 348, ran a, a 4.78. One of the best-looking talents at the Combines. Oh, and by the way, he won. I mean, I really don't have to break that down that much, do I, to go, well, I think I'm going to take the kid. Okay? Right? 
So when we're talking about organizations and how people look at things and how they build things, there's a reason most people do shit. Okay? The Rays build a win. Phillies build a show. The Eagles are not a very entertaining football team. That's what kills that owner. Jeffrey Lurie knows his team's boring. I'm all right with boring. I'm okay with boring if it wins. That 17 football season for the Philadelphia Eagles had to be the most entertaining season in history, including the gang green teams, including the fog bowl, all of that, the body bag game. Maybe all those games were entertaining and people enjoyed them, but that 17 season had drama in it. It was perfect for your owner quarterback out of a small college goes to an 11 and two season gets hurt in la la land to boot he gets hurt in los angeles you bring in a journeyman nobody expected shit and it ends with the philly special that is the best drama you can ever it's unbelievable actually and it ends on broad street The team you have now, which is bugging them, in my opinion, is not very entertaining. Now, will these additions make them? Again, we're hoping, correct? We're hoping. We're all hoping. But he's wishing anything. Right? I don't agree. It's got to be very hard to run a successful and winning franchise over time. Of course it is. Sirianni is a square if this team isn't exciting. I don't know, between the Kobayashi stuff and planting of the seeds, thinking they're pot seeds instead of sunflower seeds, I don't know. Sure. Being a one-dimensional football team is not exciting. Now, they're going to have the Eagles here. The Eagles in this offseason gave themselves a facelift. They're not going to be the team they were a year ago. You don't pay $100 million for that. I completely agree, Jimmy. I don't give a shit about a guy's legs. Unless that quarterback can lead the NFL in passing like Lamar Jackson did. Okay? Unless that guy can go like this, 1,400 or 1,100 yards rushing, 36 touchdown passes, led the NFL, I'm all right with that. Yeah, Sydney. Jalen Hurts is part of the offensive rushing attack. That's not the way you win games. What quarterback in the NFL with that style is going to win us? That includes Lamar. You think who? Who do you? What's this? Let me ask. Let's let's use Lamar for. It. I got to get to these storylines. I promise you, I will. Let me ask you guys a question. Let's just use Lamar Jackson because he is the prototypical dude and Jalen's kind of like a 2.0 guy. Who do you think has a better chance to win a Super Bowl, Joe Burrow or Lamar Jackson? Who do you think has a better shot to win a Super Bowl? Lamar Jackson or Joe Burrow? Who would you think? Let's put Burrow here. Not me, it's Joe Burrow. Okay. Burrow. This is not going to be that difficult of an exercise. Burrow, big time. 
Who do you think has more of a chance to win a Super Bowl? Oh, wait, he already has, so I'll have to use and, and take out Mahomes. So let's go here. Justin Herbert. Who do you think has a better chance to win a Super Bowl, especially with that Charger team this year? Justin Herbert or Lamar Jackson? I, I think Justin Herbert, too. Justin Herbert, right? Okay. Herbert? Let's see. Pick another guy. Who's got a better chance to win a Super Bowl? Let me pick somebody closer. Who do you think has a better chance to win a Super Bowl? Kirk Cousins or Lamar Jackson? I think Carr, a car by far. Okay. Kirk Cousins got Thielen, Dalvin Cook, and Justin Jefferson. Okay. <laughs> Kirk Cousins, who is Lamar throwing to? Can you name me one wide receiver they have? No, it's not. Because I'm going to show you Lamar has a less chance than what Cousins does. Cousins has 10 times the superior talent in Minnesota than what they do in Baltimore. There's 10 times the talent in Minnesota. They got a pro bowler at every position skilled-wise in Minnesota and they ain't got anybody in Baltimore. There's more talent in Minnesota. Yeah, but there's nobody there. It's just him. You think receivers want to play in Baltimore? Why? Hollywood Brown said, get me the hell out of here. Derek Carr or Lamar? That's the point there. That's style of play, man. Let me tell you this. When Ozzy left the building and left Lamar for John Harbaugh and the rest of that front office, he left him with a dilemma. As great here, let's use your own Michael Vick. Did you actually think in Michael Vick's history that he was ever, even with the prison time, did you ever think Michael Vick was going to win a Super Bowl? Or he was just exceptionally entertaining to watch. He was never going to win a Super Bowl. Like, ever. Michael Vick was never going to win a Super Bowl. But he was something else to watch. It's kind of what I was talking about with Bryce Harper and some of these other guys. It's great. They're great to watch, but they're not really going to lead you to winning or anything. Just, it's, I mean, yeah, you did win, but you weren't going to win it. Jeff, I never said that the, that the Vikings are going to win it. I said they had a better chance to win it than Baltimore did because there's more talent in Minnesota. Are you kidding yourself? You don't really think there's more talent in Minnesota offensively. You got a wide receiver that they're negotiating a $26 million contract extension with. You got another guy who's had a thousand yard seasons in Thielen. You got a running back who's the second best, maybe third best back in the game at Dalvin Cook. Pretty fair offensive line, a quarterback that's thrown for 4,000 yards in six of his 10 years in the league. And you're telling me you think there's more talent in Baltimore. Where are you seeing that? Where in your right mind do you see that? Mike, no question, he completely got killed the same way Cam did because the referees didn't know how to legislate and didn't know how to really call penalties on him when he was getting killed. Chargers and Raiders are going to be awesome this year. That AFC West, all of those teams could make the postseason. 
Every team in the West can make the postseason, in my opinion. It's the best division, and it's not close. Chiefs, Broncos, Raiders, Chargers. All four of those teams are top 10 teams. Baloney on that point. Can you believe that? He thinks there's more talent, Jeff does, in Baltimore than in Minnesota. You got 2,000 yard wide receivers. You got a back who's a 1,500 yard a year guy. And you got a quarterback in Minnesota who's a better thrower than Lamar is. Man, that's not just an opinion. Those are facts. Look the numbers up, guy. Jesus, criminy. Davey Boy, I think Zimmer did hold him back and injuries. They completely underachieved. That's why Rick Spielman lost his gig. Totally why he lost his gig. All right. Here's this list. I want to hit on this just a little bit. Matt Nagy. I love Matt Nagy. Here's the storylines, according to Peter King, okay, for the 2022 season. Got to get this in here. I teased it long enough. Xander will kill me if I don't get to it here. Let me let me throw this at you here. And, and Peter, listen it in order here. Roger Goodell always going to lead off the list. Goodell, hey, I was hearing that Goodell was going to call it a career, but he just signed a contract extension. Roger Goodell ain't going anywhere. You know, Roger Goodell makes $68 million a year. He's not an owner, and he makes $68 million a year. My God. He's the highest paid non-owner in the NFL, and that includes the players. $68 million. Deshaun Watson's going to be the second biggest story. Okay? He's going to be this. I, I agree with Peter King. Um, what happens? Do you think he gets suspended for the full year? I think Deshaun's going to get suspended for half the year. I think he's going to, I think he's getting eight games. I think he gets eight games. Yeah, nuts. Roger Goodell is the biggest sword swallower in sports. You can take whatever you want with that. But he swallows the sword for the owners, man. Right here, right here, right here. Matt Maggie. That's what he does. Swallows the sword. $68 million. Tom Brady. Hey, do you think Tom Brady... Is this the year Father Time finally catches his ass? Okay. Do, do you think this is the year it finally catches him? I don't think Brady and the Bucks win the Super Bowl, but I think they're going to be right there. Patrick Mahomes. I can't wait to see what that Chiefs team does this year. Are the Chiefs going to rebound, or are they going to continually start to disintegrate in front of us? I was told that this Chiefs team with Andy Reid was going to be a dynasty. They got one Super Bowl to their name. Are they starting to get to that point now? Are they retooling the team? Who's going to run the ball? Juju Smith-Schuster's taking over for Tariq Hill? Let's see what Pat Mahomes does this year. Number five, Rob Walmart. 13th richest man in America. Looks like he's going to get the Broncos. What does that mean to the Broncos? And what kind of ownership is going to pop up with this? Will it be like Pat Bolin had it? Football people in the room? Or will it be like we see with Woody Johnson with the Jets? This is going to be interesting to see how this works out here. Looks like he's going to get the the, um, the Broncos. This is going to be interesting. Marie Donahue. Hey, guys, let me ask you something here on Thursday Night Football. Are you going to watch Thursday Night Football on Amazon? It's going to be on Amazon. 
And you have to subscribe to Amazon if you're going to. It's almost like UFC now with ESPN+. Plus. For you to get that game, you've got to now have Amazon. Are you going to do that? This is almost like cable television here, okay? Okay? It's football. If football is on, people will watch it, okay? I think that's going to be interesting to see how this works. You got to now stream pro football on Thursday night. Okay. Guarantee those numbers go down a little bit. Josh Allen and the Bills, they're the favorites to win the Super Bowl this year. I got them against the Eagles, actually, in the Super Bowl. Sean McVay. How many more years do you think it is for Sean McVay to be the head coach of the Rams before he takes a TV job and makes $35 million a year? I think McVay is going to coach a couple more years. By the time he's 40, he's done. He's going to pull John Madden. I see him in a broadcast booth. I could see him totally going, hey, man, if he's supposed to be, he wins another Super Bowl. I mean, this guy's 36 years old. He's got his whole life ahead of him, and it seems like he's already coached a decade. Aaron Rodgers is going to be an interesting year. Okay? He's going to – let's see what happens in Green Bay. No more Devontae Adams. Matthew Berry. The emergence of fantasy football continuing to grow because of sports betting. This guy on ESPN, I believe he's on ESPN. Hey, fantasy football is going to continue to go through the roof. And I'm even going to have a segment for fantasy football uh, during the season. Because you know why? If you're missing out on that and you think it's dumb, well, you're the only ones that think it's dumb. There's a reason the NFL invests in it. There's a reason why sports gambling is now becoming a major asset in it. If you're not involved in it, you're behind. Fantasy football is now becoming, and I, by the way, I don't know it. I'm not a fantasy guy. But if you're not and you're not evolving, that's on you. I can't wait to see what Joe Burrow does. Can he, can he pick up and do what he did a year ago and take his Bengals and c- continue to create that great atmosphere that's going on in Cincinnati? Daniel Snyder, will he still own the football team by the end of the year? That's going to be a storyline. Jeff Pash, legal counsel for the league, as they continue to go through all this litigation with such you know, on the hill with Daniel Snyder, all the stuff going on with Deshaun. Keeping the shield somewhat clean. Bill Belichick. What if he misses the playoffs again? Does Bob Kraft go like this? Hey. I don't know. Trey Lance. Is Trey Lance going to really be the guy to take over for a guy? Like Jimmy G, who's 36 and 16 and one. Uh, I, I can't wait to see this. Bob Kraft, does he have the cannolis to tell Bill Belichick it might be time to hang it up? Stan Kroenke in the Rams. This guy's got to pay all that money out for illegally moving that team out of St. Louis. He's got to go to court for this still. You know, there's a $400 million lawsuit still on the table with the city of St. Louis because they unceremoniously moved that team illegally out of the building. Lamar Jackson's contract. And Peter O'Reilly, special events. What kind of Super Bowls? How's the NFL going to continue to expand her brand? Those are just going to be some of the great stories that people are going to see this upcoming season here. I can't wait for it, man. This Amazon thing's going to be interesting to see. All right. Meryl Reese tomorrow will join us. We appreciate everyone coming aboard with us. Please hit the like button. Till tomorrow, 3 to 6 Eastern time. We'll see you on the flip side.